Hello and welcome to the Video Game Dads Podcast. This is episode 12 of the Video Game Dads Podcast, uh, where three guys in a basement talk gaming, fatherhood, and everything in between. We are your trio of hosts with five kids between us. <laughs> I am Benjamin. And I am Adam. And I'm Shane. All right. And Adam, where can you find us? Email us, I mean. You can email us at video game or we could, you can find us in your you basement. Can, you, right? yeah, or you can even you can even Google us and find us, but uh-huh. uh video game dads at yahoo.com. Yeah, yeah. And our Facebook Shane. It's uh Facebook.com slash video game dads. And you can tweet at us, tweet away at tweet, uh, tweet. at video game dads. All right, guys. So uh, we have a few things to talk about. We'll get to our video game book club, but uh, we also uh, had our first convention. Yay! Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Bop the cork on our first one. and Almost didn't happen. <laughs> almost didn't happen, man. Uh, Freaking, uh, we, we almost got into the suck zone, yeah. as they would say in that wonderful movie Twister from 1997. <laughs> but first things first, I think we should get started with our video game book club. <laughs> All right, and those of you just newly joining us, our Video Game Book Club is a segment where each episode we pick a game that may be overlooked, misunderstood, uh, most likely not in the top 15% of whatever system library we play and um, uh, we pick, and then in between those episodes we'll play it and discuss it on the next episode like a little book club. Uh, We encourage our listeners to submit suggestions, and uh, we've gotten some this last time too, so we'll, we'll share those at the end and put them in our pool. Um, and it doesn't have to stick with whatever console we're currently on. It could be a handheld, whatever. Uh, Just also include a little spiel about why you're submitting it, why you like it, why you want us to discuss it, and it will go in our pool, and then randomly we pick one each episode, and we also pick uh, our pick, which we did last time. So we have two to discuss this time, which is uh, different for us, but that also speeds things along, so that'll be nice. Everybody their pick. Yeah, Yeah, everybody will get their pick. Um, So our first game was my pick last time. We're on the Super Nintendo and um, I chose Skyblazer. Skyblazer. Yeah. Which, Skyblazer. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little about Skyblazer, Adam. Sure. So Skyblazer, uh, it's a Super Nintendo game, as you uh, mentioned, released in 1994. Great um, year. Yeah, great, great, year. Year. great year. It came out from Sony uh, ImageSoft, who published yeah, it. Yeah, that was back when they were like... <laughs> that was back when Sony and Nintendo liked each other. They were buddies, and <laughs> yeah. they were like, hey, we're going to like, We're going to make our yeah. own console together. <laughs> yeah, it's going to have a CD in it, and there's only going to be one of them, and you're going to find it in an attic, and then it's going to travel around in conventions. <laughs> oh, wait, that wasn't the plan, but that's what happened. And right, uh, it was... it was uh, So that's who published it. It was developed by... By a, a Japanese developer called Yuki Yotai, which I'm sure I mispronounced. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, I guess I but don't know. Uh, they sound good to me. I, I actually looked them up because I had never heard of them before. But they did uh, several um, like SNK Neo Geo ports for oh, really? uh, like the Neo Geo Pocket and some like Game Boy stuff and and a, and a few PlayStation games. But they were only around a few years and then fizzled up and blew oh. off away. I guess that sucks. But. Uh, this game can be had for about sixty five bucks loose retail. Yeah, um, yeah. but you could find it. it yeah, for you can forty five fifty if yeah. you try a little harder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, it it runs ninety to one hundred bucks complete in box most of the time online. But but uh, so it, it is a little bit more pricey, but. It's on also on the Super Nintendo, which yeah, everything's yeah, pricey. Yeah, yeah everything, to, everything's pricey. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to see what you guys think if it's worth it, but I'm going to try to justify my thing at the end. But um, so it's an it's a uh, platformer. Right, platformer. action yeah, platformer, action platformer. Yep. Uh, much in the vein of, uh, I kind of think it's kind of like Mega Man. Yeah, yeah, it's like a bunch of slashes. Mega Man, slash. it's like Strider. That's yeah. what I. That's Strider what I think slash. There's a little Strider. You I know. here's yeah. what I put the trio. I said it kind of is, and hopefully this will intrigue you if you haven't played. It's kind of like Mega Man meets Castlevania meets Little Samson. Now follow me. Little Samson didn't have a Super Nintendo, but like the whole. The, the guy's got something in his hair. It's kind of like Strider, too. He's got, mm-hmm. like, a headband with his hair popping out. Um, yeah, there's not, like, a mouse that you play as. But I feel like if little Samson was able to grow up and have a Super Nintendo <laughs> game, it would play a lot like Sky Blazer. Yeah, it would could, grow up, and it yeah. would have, like... You know, because the platforming in Little Samson for the NES is wonderful. Yeah. Not $1,000 wonderful, no. uh, but <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. And this one uh, kind of has the same kind of elements, the wall climbing and that kind of thing. Yeah, but Slash anyway. Ninja Gaiden also. Yeah, Jeez. yeah. So what did you guys think? Uh, Shane, what did you think of it? Really good game. I mean, the, a lot of the 
elements like we were talking about. I mean, it's just they pulled from a lot of good games. So, yeah. I mean, they, they started their bases of the game in really good spots. I mean... Yeah, kind of end of the life cycle, so they kind of yeah, what they're doing. Yeah, that was in... Was this at the end of the life cycle Getting then? There. Yeah, Getting yeah, there. Yeah, it was later. A little yeah, bit later, is it? It was mid, mid to late-ish. Tough game. To me, I, I had troubles with it. I thought it was sort of tough. Yeah. I mean, but I was also playing on the little screen at the convention, so that could have been a little yeah. bit of an issue, but... I, yeah. uh, it's cool. It's got an overworld, like sort of like a Super Mario's, right? Yeah. I mean, where you could pick your stages and stuff. That was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, you go down a road and it moves yeah. up the next level. Yeah, yeah, it moves up the next level. Yeah, so. music's not bad. Music's kind of yeah, music's in. fits the. So I guess we would say it's kind of um, fantasy meets. Um, I, 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 you know, what's the setting? The setting is kind of like. Um, I don't know, like uh, like fantasy lore. We're not talking like all the way Lord of yeah, the Rings. Yeah, it's like but... it's like ancient feudal Japan. Yeah, but it mixed yeah. with a little bit of India because the yeah. the bosses yeah. you fight have like you know six arms and things, and the music is a little bit kind of sounds like it's from India or yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, got a little twang to it. Yeah. Um, but I like what I really like about this game. I don't know if you guys got to this point, but there's some mode seven playing in this game, yeah, yeah, which I appreciate. There's one level where like you're basically going up a lighthouse mm-hmm. and it scrolls around. There's yep. other like 3d space Harrier type mode seven, like straight up, uh, F zero star Foxy type of look. Um, they're not, mo- what's star Fox? What's that chip? That's the, FX the super chip. FX. That's the FX. Yeah. Chip. Oh, so that's FX. not mode seven. Okay. Yeah. Mode seven is just yeah. total, but yeah, it's not quite as that great. <laughs> Slippy, get off my! Tail. I actually think the mode seven in this is pretty good, it, and it's weird because it, it it on the mode seven levels like you're talking about where you're flying, it it switches between sort of a the action platform or let's run and slash and beat things up to yeah. you're flying and it's almost like a like a shooter, you know, essentially. Yeah. But then there's there's horizontally scrolling portions where it's kind of a standard shooter, but then there's also behind the back scrolling segments. Yeah, with the mode seven, which is more your space harrier afterburner. Yeah, you know, kind of. Kind so of yeah. look, it so. mixes things up, and you can always go back too, which is nice. Like you can go back to any level you want, replay them over and over if you want. Um, and you kind of get stronger through the game, which I really mm-hmm. uh, appreciate it. So my background to why I picked this game, I never played it as a kid. I literally just was in a store that had a buy two get one free mm-hmm. and the two other games were a certain price and I was looking around the store for another game that price. So I ended up getting it for like, I don't know, 35, 38 bucks. Nice. But yeah. I quickly looked on eBay. I was like, this is going for 60. I was like, ah, it's a deal. If I even don't want it, it's a good trade bait. I make my money back. But I looked at a couple of the screenshots and I was like, oh, okay. It's not, it's not some kind of crazy like lengthy rpg it like looks interesting yeah. and they're rating pretty well the box art's super kind of weird but yeah. when you <laughs> actually play the game it does kind of fit in it and you can see there's a little of that feudal japan india type stuff but um i just picked it up on a whim never heard of it and um i'm really glad i did yeah. uh but it's yeah it's you tough a like good you one said to pick on a limb like that i mean yeah I, it, I never get lucky like that i pick out one i'm like oh i'm getting a little bit of deal and i play it and i'm like man this game's garbage uh, yeah <laughs> well, i was originally not even going to keep it because i'm like i have all the super nintendo games i want but then it kind of reminded me like oh man there's so much stuff on there yeah. that we don't know about yep. um another one that uh, someone picked uh that we'll talk about here in a second that i never even heard of and i started looking it up i'm like ah super nintendo there's a reason why yeah i don't know if we said this before in a previous podcast we each picked mm-hmm our favorite like we all said hey what's our top five consoles like we just texted each other it was on a whim and we we all said like our top five consoles you know that are our favorite it's not like we think it's the best like you know i put game boy advance in there dreamcast but we all had super nintendo and then as far as <laughs> yeah and it's like even for me super nintendo might be number four if it's number two on yours one yeah. on yours it's like yeah, there's a reason why yeah. uh it's a it's a great console but um yeah what what else adam well, I mean, it was, <clears throat> I kind of just like the art style of it just because I, you know, it's a system I grew up growing. It sounds like a Super Nintendo yeah. game. It looks like a Super Nintendo yeah. game. It plays like a Super Nintendo game should play. Yeah. So everything about it is very prototypical and kind of standard yeah. for the system. And so it, it kind of puts you back into that into that frame of reference. So, um, you know, it's it's real nice sprites, good animations. And, and there's something about the, the sound of the Super Nintendo um, just that it makes that, that just puts you back you know where you ought yeah. to be when you're playing it, and this this yeah. game hits all the right the right keys for that. Did you guys see any of, or play any of the boss fights? Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah. There's yeah. some mode seven usage on there too. Mm-hmm. Like the boss fights are totally like one screen, um, uh, but yeah, yeah, they just um, they they mix things up, and it's not again, it's not especially difficult. 
Um, but yeah, I, I really like that they, they do some stuff I've never seen before. And when this came out, like I think we said last episode, there were so many... And this came out when, I mean, action platformers 2D, you know, we're getting ready for 3D land polygons and Ugh. stuff like that. This just Yuck. kind of fell on the wayside and it wasn't by, you know, a, a strong publisher, I guess, or one that you would think about. And the name, yeah. the name didn't help it. The timing didn't help it. Uh, but when you look back on it, you're like, wow, if they would, this, this is like a great action platformer yeah. and it's nice to play something that um is kind of overlooked and you can actually like um have fun discovering a game that also did stuff that you haven't really seen yeah. so that i really appreciate that, that yeah at that price point too i mean that's i mean that's a good game really good game for that price point i, I mean 65 sounds expensive or 55 or whatever yeah. but i mean it's solid yeah. there, solid there game, are a lot man. worse games that are a lot more expensive yeah on that's a solid yeah. game yeah. for I that mean, price it, yeah it's hard we just want to make recommendations like if it's in your budget to pick it up yeah i say definitely, definitely pick it up especially it. loose yeah. you know unless you're some weird complete collector like some of us are <laughs> ah. uh just you know and you also if you're getting some games that's a great opportunity to like hey if they got it at your game store knock 30 bucks off and trade in some games you don't like or yeah. something for it to make that uh, even cheaper game to get but um it uh it it's it's one of the few times that you can uh pick something that you've never like i said you've never heard of and um uh you know find something find something new at least that's what yeah, i did sure it's it always really a great like feeling when you get a game that you're like man i don't know if this is going to be any good then yeah. you play it and you actually really like, like it, it versus yeah. the opposite where yeah. you're like oh this is going to be really good then you play it and it's, it's just, just a, a giant turd yeah, oh, yeah. You know? Clap. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a much better feeling the other way around you know and I, and I can remember i guess back you know way back in the day at the five for five uh Video game rentals that I used to do five bucks, five days, five dollars. Yeah. Uh, so I, I would go load up with uh, once a week five NES games, and uh, yeah, I remember sometimes you get five great games, sometimes you get five turd burgers, yep. and it was yep. always uh, it was always depressing a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I always remember, when, yeah, you're like, man, all of these are just bad. My worst game I ever picked up, like renting wise, was Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh yeah, I, oh, I remember yeah, me and my buddy, went, yeah, yeah, me and my buddy went and returned it. And he's like, you're not supposed to do this, but we've heard from other people that it's bad, so we'll let you do it this time. But That's you can't funny. bring down this next. You can't bring back the next one, though. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, thank you. <laughs> well, and, and yeah, I can recall once or twice trying to return bad games to like Walmart or whatever, you know. Yeah. To, and they're like, no, you've opened it. <laughs> <You've> opened it. <laughs> this is this is your mistake. You, you're going to have to live with it. This is your bed. You're going to have to sleep. So, yep. Have yep. a nice day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah so uh difficulty is good you feel stronger as you're going through the game which is good and you can also gain new power-ups that help you like traverse some of the stuff that's initially hard you're like how am i going to pass this you forget like oh i've got this awesome like air dash yeah. that i can do and there's some levels where you're like in a tree like crouching tiger hidden dragon yeah that, that kind cool. of thing's really cool it just makes it up enough yeah and, it, really... well, and I, the thing that's nice about it too versus a lot of other action platforms like this is there's a lot of verticality to it i think that's yeah. the right word but you, you run you run side to side like a lot of them but a lot of the levels you go up, up. where you go sideways like yep. you go horizontal for a while then you go up and, and you and, start shooting down yeah, yeah, yeah there's just a lot of yeah. there's just a lot of interesting little gimmicks you know every every level kind of has its own little unique, unique. thing and there's yeah. a lot of different looks of the levels so i guess if i'd be debbie down the only thing i think i had a problem with is sometimes when you latch on the wall it has sort of an issue not like ninja gaiden like ninja gaiden you know you sort of able to flip up and do that sometimes it gets stuck in one spot and it's like chick, chick, chick. i mean yeah did you guys have that issue yeah too? yeah it is it's not of... a big deal because like where you guys are talking is like you know it's as the more you play it you get better so but that was my only thing yeah the, the, my only debbie downer moment of it but i mean not bad at all, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, there's some stuff like when you get at the tip of a ledge, you can tell they didn't quite know what to do, yeah, uh, how to get the guy up. But as long as you keep tapping, you get back up there. And the platform, yeah, I wish you could just, I wish you just pull himself up or something. That yeah. would have been an awesome. Feature. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. uh, enemy design was really good too, really interesting, really weird. Like, yeah, they're like, hey, let's dudes, make a fire yeah. breathing gator walking around, <laughs> like, just yeah, random. There was some I didn't even know what a lot of them were. I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm yeah, cool. it's <laughs> like, what is this guy? But, um, Something else, too. They had some, like, nice, you know, the parallax scrolling's really well done. And they had, like, cool background effects. Like, uh, when you're going through the level, all of a sudden, if you see, like, some unlit torches, then, like, you'll see lightning that lights the torches. And at first, you're like, crap, that looks like some enemy thing. But no, it's just, like, for 
ambiance, oh, which yeah, is just, you know, yeah, they, that's cool. It, yeah. It's it's put together pretty well. Um, good size per sprite and everything. Um, I think at the end, anything else you guys have to say about no, Sky I Blazer? Think that's most of what yeah, I have to say. Yeah. recommended. Yeah, I definitely. think uh, a new thing we're going to try to do is at the end of talking about it, we should read the back art. <laughs> yeah, conclude this book <laughs> with some reading. Right, this little book club. Uh, so Sky Blazer, uh, Ashura, Lord of War, has conquered the realm. And only Sky Blazer has the power to save the world from eternal evil. Only Sky Blazer. You only know, Sky. there's a reason we didn't talk about the story in this game because it's kind of like take it <laughs> yeah. or leave it. It's a princess. <laughs> she gets taken by some, you know, god of eight legs. Uh, Princesses get stolen. In yeah, games? yeah. I mean, you know, they're that. trying to do something different. <laughs> uh, but the son of the sorcerer called Sky Lord. Oh, that's great. What's the guy's name from uh, Sky, Sky from uh, 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 Guardians of the Galaxy? Oh, uh, Star Lord. Star Lord. Yeah. yeah. Oh, whoa. This yeah. thing's on. Guardians of the Galaxy. It turns out to be a total ripoff of this game. Yeah, <laughs> and it's actually uh, I, I saw that yesterday, guys. Oh, it's really good. Yeah, really? I, it's yeah. one of those you have to like the first one, but I don't know many people that didn't like the first. If you one, don't like yeah. the first Galaxy, yeah, yeah, yeah Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. Yeah, just, we'll judge you. I'm yeah. not gonna yeah. lie though. Yeah. I, when I first seen that, I was like, I don't know. And then when the I previous. watched it, I was yeah. 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 Was you like, what I think is yep, the best part of that good. movie. Vin Diesel's best acting he's ever done has been as a tree yeah. saying one word. Yeah. <laughs> Three, three words, the eye of the animal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, three words. Uh, this also plays on that whole... It, I, yeah, it's super funny and done really well. Kurt Russell... Uh, I don't know. He's always kind of take it or I didn't leave. know Kurt Russell was in it. Yeah, yeah. It's oh. in the preview. Sorry, I didn't want to spoil it. Oh, well, I haven't, I haven't shouldn't seen the be a spoiler because yeah. they even say his name like right at the beginning. But... I don't. I don't get. The, I don't see previews or things anymore. Okay. I have yeah. children. Uh, what <laughs> I like. <child. laughs> I what I liked about the first. I won't go in. We're not a movie review podcast, but um, the first movie I think did a great job of introducing like eight or nine characters yeah. to the point where you understood their mo their motives or yeah, their something motivation. the X Men movies could never do well. Yeah. 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 Um, yep. but you know, they try, you know, after seven Wolverine movies, I now know why he's so angry. <laughs> uh, and that last one was good too. That Logan, that thing was oh, hardcore. Yeah. You need good. a stiff yeah. drink I after need, that movie was done, man. I, I was, ex- I was like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go home and just stare at a wall, man. That thing, that thing threw me for a loop. That's a good movie too. Um, but anyway, it gets into the background of all the characters really well and super intri- I don't know. It's, it does things different, but I highly recommend that. Anyway, back to this. Sky Blazer. Exper- like, I wouldn't be reading this as a 10-year-old either. This is another thing. It would have <laughs> lost me. It's just one big, long paragraph. Experience revolutionary revolutionary action and uh, perilous journeys over many strange and o- otherworldly lands. What a weird sentence. <laughs> Where water spouts stand like towers, which it does. Sand shift like oceans, and enemies leap down from trees and rise from molten lava. That's all right. The awesome collection of diabolical bosses... Uh, can only be defeated by tapping Skyblazer's amazing strength and resources, like the Comet Flash and the Fiery Phoenix. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Man. Oh, boy. Yeah, this thing's turning into, like, a romance novel. They just, they, yeah, they just shoved it right through the hyperbole yeah. mill. Skyblazer's <laughs> chest glistened in the light. Skyblazer. Yeah, no, okay, that wasn't in there. Uh, you bet a land, soar high up into the clouds, swim through it. Oh, yeah, they, they had some swimming sections that were pretty cool because you reached some currents, kind of like, I don't know, I love uh, Finding Nemo and the, you know... You, Find some fast currents. Um, explore bizarre ruins. Climb sheer cliffs as you travel from the gateway of eternal storms to the Tower of Tarosilic. They just throw letters up in the air and pick a thing. <laughs> Tarosilic, Ashura. Tarosilic will get you a crap Autumn. ton of points in Scrabble. Yeah. By the way, oh, I guess that's a proper name. Though. Yeah. Disqualification. Yeah, I know. I would just, I, why is this written in, in pencil in my <laughs> Thor, uh, uh Then face the ultimate challenge of defeating Ashura. The world's fate is in your hands. Well, if I didn't put you to sleep, you should play this game. It's a really good game. <laughs> yeah. Really uh, good game. So moving on to our listener pick. Uh, what was our listener pick, Adam? It is Task Force Harrier EX. For the Sega Genesis. For the Sega Genie. Nice. And it has eight megs of power. Eight mega power. Wow. Eight mega power. <laughs> the Sega Genesis does not mess around. So this was the listener pick, uh, and it was interesting. So this was a uh, shooter. A horror, wait, vertical, vertical, vertical shooter. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. there's two different types, uh, or people call them shmups, yeah, shoot 'em ups. But, um, who's our guy, our, our, our YouTube, uh, Bithead, yeah, Bithead always he, yeah. he gave a really good video about it. Sound he gets not, mad when people say shmup, though, yeah, he's yeah. like, it should be, it's a shooter. And nowadays, shooter, you think first person, yeah. but you say first person shooter. And I do remember yeah. this is a shooter, it's a vertical shooter, uh, and shmup kind of, I don't know, it kind of sounds I, like it, that never stuck with me. Yeah. I just call it shooter, it's easier. 
Yeah, I always sh- forget shmup. Yeah, shmup. shmup sounds like a guy. Who I was calling like, shooters growing up, but yeah. yeah, 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 I did too. I knew shmup until just a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, shmup also like it's and a pretty hardcore kids. game. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. Like this, this kind of game, right? Shooters aren't for hipsters. They're for like hardcore gamers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or a video yep. game arcade or whatever. So when you hear a word like shmup, that just sounds like a guy who like takes money out of your wallet when you're not looking. <laughs> yeah, like who is this shmup? <laughs> Yeah, or like the Smurf that has a brain injury. That's his name. <laughs> old shmup over there. Yeah. Yeah. He keeps running into the wall. Just give him a helmet. He's not even blue. He's not even a yeah. Smurf. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. I, the, the cool thing about this game, so it came out, um, let me pull it up here. It came out in, in 91. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, it it's definitely, it goes for realism. Yeah. This one does. I mean, realism, yeah. it is real as you can have eight zillion rockets in a, yeah. you know, sure. a It starts out <laughs> real. <laughs> yeah, you're shooting, like, bombs on the ground yeah. and shooting missiles in yeah. the sky. I mean, so it has the same <laughs> things as, as a lot of others, but it, it goes for a realistic look. Yeah. Let's just say that. Yeah. And, and the, the plane in it is actually... Um, in the little cutscene, like at the end of the game and stuff, it it's one of those uh, vertical takeoff airplanes. That oh, a hair, oh, a, duh, you know, hair like a hair. Yeah. Yeah. So it it lands on the thing, you know, raises up off of like an aircraft carrier, then shoots off. And how long? Um, style. <laughs> and I don't know about planes, but Harriers haven't been around forever. No, like, this no. is when they were pretty new. This is like, well, I mean, I think of where I was in '91, and this was around the time of like the Gulf War, right? Yeah. yeah. So yep. every everything was like America, yeah, yeah. military, <laughs> ooh, <Ugh. laughs> yeah. yeah. And so this this. Uh, uh, this game is like definitely that I think you know it's it, it was made by a company called Traco and I actually don't know where they're at whether that's Japanese or American uh, but hmm. uh, but this is definitely like you know military good blowing people you know blowing the bad blowing, people up yeah, good blowing. you know yeah <laughs> so it, it definitely goes for goes for realism and I think kind of capitalizes on uh, on sort of uh, the the things that were popular at the time yeah because yeah. most vertical shooters are kind of like spacey sci-fi yeah they're mostly yeah. all spacey uh, so a lot of lasers and yeah. stuff but these are all just hardcore bullets and stuff coming out uh, even though you get all those uh, additions or whatever all those power ups and things yeah like and you're that. shooting it, tanks and I think one of the, one of the bosses like a hovercraft and you know but they're all they're all "Quote unquote real vehicles." Well, know, one of the, them was like oh, yeah. from a monster truck rally. He had like flames coming out of his arm. I think <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah. level four. The boss is mm-hmm. like, I was like, man, is this turning a must <laughs> monster truck rally or something? Like, yeah, this crazy. It, it kind of reminds me of Raiden, actually, if you've ever, yeah. or Raiden, depending Raiden, on how yeah. you want to pronounce sure, it. But, yeah, because uh, yeah. um, I had that on Super Nintendo when I was a when I was a kiddo. But but it's it's sort of that sort of realism. Or if you want to go back earlier, uh, 1942 or 1943. On the I was going to say this. Yeah, sounds, yeah that actually, now that I this think feels about like it. if 19 yep. like just like Lil Samson, if 1942 like grew up and turned 90s or yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just had this a little more attitude. Yeah, because it's kind of like, well, we can't make this realistic because it would be boring. Let's just make it kind of like this certain genre, but let's add this kind of like somewhat realistic military flair to yeah. it. Uh, it's pretty hard, don't you guys? Yeah, think? I thought yeah. it was. I thought it was pretty hard. I mean. It's not a bullet hill shooter, which is an aside. I'm I really like bullet hill shooters. Some people yeah. hate them. Um, my favorite shooters are pretty much all bullet hill shooters. Yeah. This is definitely an old school. Just a few bullets on screen, lots of enemies. Yeah. The thing that gets me about this one is the shooters that I'm good at and the ones I like all have relative. They have a ton of bullets, but they're all relatively slow moving. So, yeah. And I can kind of plot my course, and and they end up being kind of just a. Uh, a puzzle game, for lack of a better uh, for for of a better term, where you're trying to negotiate your way through these tight little spaces. Yeah. Um. And this one is the bullets and everything moves really fast. Yeah. Like it's definitely much faster than than most of the other sh- uh, shooters that I that I've that I've played recently. And that was the hardest thing for me is just this one is reaction time. Like yes. you, you just don't have a whole lot of time to think or to plan things out. Stuff happens and you have to react to it. And you, it was cool. Cause then like the little ships, like if you hit the B button, then you could have these uh, two little ships go next to you. Yeah. Basically options. Options. Yeah. 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 And then if you had them towards the back, you would move even faster, which mm-hmm. threw me off a bunch because then I would yeah. run into the bullets. Yeah. If you put them in front fast. of you, they block bullets. You can put them to the side of you, which gives you wider spread, Yeah, wider spread of your bullets. I just like keeping it normal yeah. most times. Yeah. But then if like I got to a boss, I would, kick it to the front to get more shooting power or mm-hmm. like more bullets in condensed area. Yeah. And I like and, doing that. And this You're is using some military strategy. Look at you, Shane yeah. over there. Yeah. Well, and, and, and like, you know, a lot of uh, shooters at the time, like it definitely rewards repetition and, and learning the enemy patterns and all those kinds of things. Cause some of the, there's a mix of smaller, you know, 
uh, enemies that only take like one hit, and then it, but then there's larger enemies also dotted throughout the levels, which are just bullet sponges. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't and if you don't get on those guys, you know, right when they show up or know where they're going to show up, they really do slow you down and put you at a big disadvantage. So oh. so you have to remember where all that stuff is. I got something for you guys. Hmm? Pro tip. Yeah. <laughs> Level two, I think. Mm-hmm. That when the four planes come at you, just stay in the dead center. They won't hit you ever. To stay, keep your clo- uh, your ships close. Uh huh. They won't ever hit you. Interesting. Yeah. And I, some of the bosses are that way too. Like I watched uh, some 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 YouTube videos after uh, I played it, and I was like, oh, there's like this really specific little area in some of the boss stages where, yeah, you can get there. And a lot of shooters are that way. Yeah. But but you know, it, you would think it would be the most dangerous place on the screen because it's right next to the boss or something. But yep. but yeah, all the bullets will just circle around you. Right I got really you. lucky and learned that because I was like, yeah. I'm not getting hit. I'm not going to move, so... Yeah. <laughs> you just held still. Like, yeah, just held safe. still. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it takes of, longer, but it works, so I was like, eh, I'll go with it. That's funny. It's like Pyramid Head and like Silent Hill. Have you, do you guys remember that? It's a weird... That's like, been a long time ago, yeah. Yeah, but like, if, like when he comes, it's just all you can do is it's like T-Rex freaking Jurassic <laughs> Park. Like, don't move. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's... Um, I did not get super far, but there is one boss that kind of looked like... Um, he looked like a freaking space shuttle. It was like one of those Concord planes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I, that was level three. Yeah, that one threw. That I think one it was like sucked. level. Eight. There's yeah. 13 total levels from what I yeah. saw, and this was like level eight or nine. Uh, I feel like anybody under 30 years old wouldn't even know what a Concord is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, um, I just anyway. I don't I, think it's a space shuttle. I think yeah. it looks like a. I think it does look like a Concorde anyway. Well, you know, they go. It goes really high, but like that whole time where you can get to, I don't know how many hours. It was like four hours you could get yeah, from New from York, to, New York France. to France. Yeah, like yeah. three hours. That's so cool. Too bad that whole <laughs> disaster happened. If you don't know what we're talking about, you should look it up. It kind of looks like we had an alternate universe at one. Yeah, point. Yeah, that and the SR seventy one Blackbird. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Man, you guys but, are over my on this one. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Nah. <laughs> yeah. but, and I guess my only the game is exactly what it should be. Sure, for the, I mean it does what it sets out to do. It yeah. does it all. Like it's a reliable shooter, shooter. that plays yep. well. It's balanced. It it. Uh, I mean it does everything it sets out to do. My my only real gripe about this because shooters. You start at the beginning and then you play and then it's you know like I said it's all about repetition. Every time you play, you just try to get a little bit further than yeah. you did on yeah. the last play. The first like three levels of this are just really bland. Yeah, like, they're it they're is, they're all gray or all kind of white or they're just. Did you notice also yeah. there would be like a higher stage, so you'd be up in the mm-hmm. air and then you would go lower yeah. like on stage two and then back up stage three, oh, back yeah. down stage four. I uh-huh. thought that was a little weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but the, and the, the levels do get more interesting as you go further into the game, which is good. I mean, that's what you want a, want a shooter to do. But It doesn't man, hook you. Yeah, yeah. you're going to see that first level so many times. Yeah. It would just be nicer to have something that really wanted to draw you in and make you play that first level again yeah. or that first two or three levels again. So that, that was really my only, my only big complaint about it is just that like, man, I really wish they would have mixed up the colors and, yeah. and just the, the pattern and the music's not good. It's not bad. It's just kind of, it's just kind of, yeah. I was going to say that. Yeah. Know, I think actually I might've liked it a little more than you. I thought yeah. the music was pretty good. I think it totally wants to be like a turbo graphics game as far as like that, the music on yeah. there on their shooters were great. So it tries to do something different. And I went and, uh, listen to a sound test of more of the music. I'm like, ah, oh, it's pretty good. It's kind of, it's, it's a little bizarre. Like it tries to get really, um, I don't know, like arpeggiated. You guys are like, sorry, I don't know if that, like, uh, all the chords or whatever, it tries to be like jazz music where it'll play like a yeah. chord and another chord, but it'll like string them all out. So it kind of, you know, it tries to do something different. It tries to be like rock and roll and whoever yeah. made that soundtrack, you can tell was somebody who just likes doing that over and over, likes arpeggiated chords. Cause it just does it over and over and over again, yeah. but it comes out pretty good and it sounds pretty good. Um, I think this is a great one. If you're a fan of shooters, this is a good recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. yeah. Uh, it's, it's definitely worth picking But up. if yeah. you don't play these and you want to get into this, this would not be no, the first. That, this is, not a, this yeah, is that, not a good entry point. No, it wouldn't be a good entry point, but if you, play shooters and stuff it'd be great I mean, yeah to pick up and it's good, good. uh price of it uh so you can get a, a loose copy for around 15 bucks uh loose okay. um used i mean i'm uh, sorry um a complete copy usually will run you 25 30 bucks uh shane over there got his significantly cheaper yeah, than you got that, it for however. like eight bucks <laughs> Yeah, nice. 10 bucks. Yeah. 10 bucks. 10 nice. bucks. All right. Do you want to conclude? You want to read yeah, that back so cover? Bear with me, peeps. All right. <laughs> All right. Task Force Harry EX. What do you or what do ya <laughs> what do, do when friendly skies turn mean? <laughs> rip through unfriendly territory. 
duck and roll in a deadly <laughs> round of air tag with a squadron of hungry enemy choppers. Make the right choice and live to finish the mission. Screw it up and get blasted into next week. Next week. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to break my mic volume, <laughs> but like blasted into next week. <laughs> yeah. Like you know, not next year, not next month. So that means no, like you return to base and you're like, I thought it was Tuesday. <laughs> not into another round. Boy, that guy got me pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. I he got I me pretty it was good. Tuesday. He knocked yeah. me the next week. I missed Mother's Day. Dang it. <laughs> That's such a weird thing to. Say. Okay, go ahead. Oh, it's, still, it's still going. Okay. Um, Task Force Harrier EX, an intense non-stop heavy heavy barreled uh, turbo bladed assault. Oh jeez Louise, this thing. Is it in Yiddish? No, nah, I'm having <laughs> trouble reading here. Demolish enemy bunkers and set uh, set. It's a little smudged. Smudgy. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> if you can't yeah, I can't really see. All I right. need my glasses. Here, you finish it up, Ben. Video game. Dads. I can't see crap. Uh, where were you at? Uh Second, uh, okay, let's see. Demolish enemy bunkers. Oh, yeah, it is kind of weird because the font is the going fonts all throw over me the colors. Off really yeah. bad. Uh, disseminate a squad of marauding enemy gunships, obliterate <laughs> these guys, and come face with dash face to face with the big guns. Strap in, yeah, power up, <laughs> yeah, and blast off on incredible oh, yeah. eight. Hold on, they, they threw in the eight meg mission. Oh, yeah, and gun down the bad guys. Eight meg mission. Wow. Uh, that's right, bud, exclamation point. <laughs> Jeez, it's kind of like they're like, hey, we got two paragraphs. Let's throw in a third. Yeah. Just to make sure this guy knows this game's for real. That's right, bud. <laughs> Fly with Task Force Harrier EX with the trademark symbol and score a free <laughs> subscription to Electronic Gaming Monthly. What the heck? Uh, that's funny. That's that's a super value, comma, free for one of the hottest video game mags on the stand. Not only Whoa. did okay, not only did they just not say newsstand, they said stand, and they didn't even go magazine. They said mag, so they're like, "Hey, the kids are gonna say hottest video game mag on the stand." What they're a, too, too cool for school, man. The there, executives man. at Traco or whatever, I thought thought they were the coolest thing ever. They yeah. probably high fived each other after writing that, and then he'll click. Yeah, I like this segment. I hope our listeners do too. We should just read the back of boxes yeah, all day. No doubt, man. man. Fun stuff. Those are our picks, our two picks. That was our listener pick. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. We have a couple to add to the pool. Um, that we do. All right. I know one of them. Uh, we apologize. Uh, a guy, TJ, on our Facebook wrote us a message, and we forgot to add it to our last one. Um, TJ, also known as Married Guy Gamer on YouTube. Check him out. Uh, he's been around a while, and he's got some pretty cool vids. Um uh, a dad himself. He's not only a married guy gamer. He's thank God he wasn't like video uh, da- video uh, dad gamer or something yeah. like that. We'd have to <laughs> call him about a trademark infringement or something, or pay him some royalties. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he picked a game I have never heard of. I don't know if you two did. Um, he wanted to throw into the pool uh, for his video game book club pick, Battle Cars for the Super Nintendo. Cool. I'm excited whenever this one gets picked because I checked it out and it sounds good. So we're going to add that to the pool. We got anything else, Adam? Yeah, we have uh, a couple of other uh, additions as well. Um, and then, of course, um, for those new to the podcast, we every time we add something to the pot, uh-huh. it stays in the pot. pot. So, uh-huh. so don't there, worry, it doesn't are, leave, folks. Yeah, it doesn't leave. So if you haven't been picked yet, you're still you're still in the tumbler. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we got a, an email from a from a fellow named Travis who's. Uh, <clears throat> who we met up uh, with at, at BitCon, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. But um, <clears throat> he said he's uh, going back, listening through all the all the episodes and getting getting caught up. I've uh, been Thank playing you. some Dusty Diamonds. Um, nice. And then uh, who picked that? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, <clears throat> he he gave us uh, two picks. I guess maybe we'll pick one of these uh-huh. uh, to to put in the uh, put in the pot at least for the time being. So the first one is Double Dragon, and the second one is Punch Out. For what, NES? NES. Man, I think Punch-Out's like top 15, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I guess, how are we defining top tif- 15? Well, top think, 15 in popularity? Yeah, I yeah. think, well, maybe he hasn't, listen, I, uh, I don't want to... N- 
knock these picks, but I'm thinking like what was it was Punch Out, which I feel like is Punch Out's One a good, game. Great, is, yeah. Everybody knows that's Punch in Out. the top ten uh, that yeah. everybody talks about. So okay, let's leave Double Dragon. Yeah, let's do Double Dragon. Okay. Yeah, let's do Double Dragon. The first one. Yep. That's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let's, do right, yep, let's do Double yep. Dragon. So that goes into the pot, and then uh, I have a, another fella uh, who's here local who's been listening to us, and uh, he's got a 13 year old. Says that they've been playing uh, Symphony of the Night Ooh, and nice. uh, Majora's Mask together, both excellent picks. Cool. Yeah, cool. and uh, <clears throat> just says that he uh, remembers dealing with what we're doing, which is taking care of little kids, you know, yeah, three yeah. and under, and how hard it is to get game playing time in, etc. Uh, and then. <clears throat> He uh, he also adds uh, SNES Blackthorn to the to the yes. list. Oh, nice! Dude. Or, no, sorry, he said it was going to be, and then we talked about oh, it. So he, he sorry, he's he's retracting that. Retracted. I, I, I misread. No. That's retracted. What? <laughs> what? What do you mean? We talked about Ben it. was going to be super excited, but since that was just discussed, so he dangles it out there for you, Benjamin. <laughs> but it wasn't like discussed a, in like a video a game. Carrot. Book. See, here's the thing. And I then was gonna he make pulls it's it taken. back. It's just taken away from Man, you. you yeah, should have so made it, that your pick. It <laughs> almost got there. Well, you can you can pick Blackthorn. I can pick it for yeah, the next round. You're a video game dad. You can pick it. All right. Well, bend the rules for you, Ben. So he also gives two picks. So we'll pick one of these to add. Um, he says we can pick either one of them. Truxton for the Genesis. Okay, oh, Truxton, man. nice. Truxton, nice. Ain't no votes on that. I don't so uh, Shane will mortgage his home and we'll buy Truxton, <laughs> or Shadow Run for the SNES. Shadow Run. Woo, that will. How isn't that going for a lot too? Um, I've got it. I think. Um, or but not uh, too bad. Uh, Tra- I don't think it's too expensive. I, it is. It's Shadow. marginally expensive. Boy, they're great. Truxton's great. Uh, yeah, I've Tra- never played it. Before. Heard like. Classic. Everybody yeah. loves yeah, Truxton. Yeah. Truxton's yeah. great. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Uh, but Shadow Runs and also uh, that's a good pick. Yeah, let's do Shadow Run. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, we'll talk about that one. Okay, Shoot. Shadow Run. All right, yeah, throw that in the pool. Okay, Shadow Run. That's Let me good. build up some of the money so I could get it. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, guys, don't, if you can't afford, uh, we we also uh, just so you know, like email us uh, if we. Pick a game you caught up with us. Tell us your thoughts on it. We will uh, we will uh, discuss your thoughts and say hey, because so far we we have people like hey we're playing this game, um, but we kind of would love if you guys would say um, like if someone played Sky Blazer this week and emailed just real quick what they yeah thought. what they thought even of when it. you hated cool. it yep. whatever uh, yeah. totally do that so it, whatever yeah gets it'd, be, this it'd time. be cool to hear somebody else's perspective on yeah some of those while games. we're on it and I know yeah, a or lot even, of times even from previous episodes it yeah even be, previous but, yeah, episodes yeah. we read and. Yeah, we, we love, love reading that. our emails and stuff, guys. We'd so. love to think. I mean, our our deal with this, besides just you know getting together and talking about it, is having you guys kind of play something and being like, "Oh, that was great." Yep. Um, yeah. Because we all can't just randomly find you know Sky Blazer and think that's good. You would pass it up, but maybe yep. right now you might pick it up and hopefully like it. And if you don't, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So let's let's pick ours uh, for for this coming week from the from the. Uh, listeners and so i have altered space on the game boy from brandon Ooh. in new york city okay that's right. still on there that poor handheld game okay. that poor handheld game it's a where it's up Hopefully altered it space good. on the game boy oh no that got picked yeah that got oh, picked. yeah that's picked, dude. Awesome. that's picked i just hit the randomizer <laughs> awesome. boom oh that's great no we need, i like thought... a jingle to let us know it's going yeah, <laughs> sorry sorry i know we were gonna <laughs> we'll add that in post just kidding <laughs> i'm doing posts we're not gonna do that i'm gonna be up late tonight editing this uh, uh Sorry, because I thought you were going through all the picks of the no, previous No, no, no. Alter Great. Space from the Game Boy. Brandon awesome. okay. from New York. That'd be cool. Brandon Our from first New York. handheld. Yeah, we'll yeah. like that. Uh, cool. So this game, I act, oh, I wish I had it in this car I uh, that I brought over because I let you guys borrow it. I bought this when this was originally picked a couple months back. Uh-huh. Uh, really cool box art. Late Game Boy, like oh, cool. within the last six months or a year of the OG Game Boy. So this is for the original Game Boy mm-hmm. called Altered Space. It's an isometric puzzle game. Mm. And it is the only like isometric game on the Game Boy. I, from what I remember, I don't. I forget who did it. <laughs> I almost want to say ImageSoft did this too, but I, I'm not sure what the publisher is. We'll we'll look it up. Um, but this is gonna be a great pick. So break out the old Game Boy, the Super. Uh, ga- yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, awesome. freaking altered space for the Game Boy. I'll have to let you guys borrow it since I own a copy. Do okay. you, yeah. you awesome. have it? I, I, don't I don't think I have it. No, yeah. my Game Boy selection's pretty weak. All right, so that is our listener pick. Now for our video game dad pick, it is up to Shane for the Super Nintendo. I'm excited about this. All right. What are I you going to s- do? Sorry, guys. I went a little pricey on this one, but I really want to play it, so it's going to make me play it. All right. Pocky and Rocky. Whoa. Pocky and Rocky. Pocky and Rocky. Whoa. I've Whoa. only got a chance to play the first few stages, and I loved it to death, so now I get a chance to actually like dig 
Awesome. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna really like Pocky and Rocky. And yeah, is, you're gonna, what's this it's about gonna like have a little t- a French guy and a tall lady, and they're trying to find? No, it's a like bowl. a girl and a raccoon, right. and they yeah. it's sort of it's like almost a the same. I was thing. trying girl to make and a Rocky <laughs> and Bullwinkle yeah. joke, and yeah. it totally fell on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, uh, smacked on the so Pocky and Rocky Super Nintendo. So you know, listeners, I'm sure everybody at home has this game. How much does this game cost? Ooh. Yeah, it's like two fifty, three. Yeah, I think it's like I think it's one fifty. Oh, I, I think the higher. first one's one fifty, one twenty five. I know it's gone up. Yeah, so, it's gone up. If this is hard to play, like obviously we don't condone you going to a website like SNES Fun or something like that <laughs> and buying a USB controller yeah. or something like that and then playing this game for free. We do not condone that. If yeah, you please wanted don't to do play that. this game <laughs> at SNESFun.com, we do not condone that at all. But I would say it's sort of like a shooter, <laughs> right? I mean, sort of like a, how you would, how would you describe this game? Like a shooter. It, well, type you're ish? you're a person on the ground, ground and it's an overhead view, view yeah. and you are shooting things. It's it's kind of uh, I mean, it's it's sort of it's like a twin stick shooter. It's like yeah. a Robotron. Yeah. It's very loaded. It's very different. Yeah, Smash yeah. TV loaded for PlayStation. For anybody that ever played that, loaded one or two. Um, they're kind of oh, the yeah. same sort of okay. game. Yeah, yeah. Play, yeah. But cool. but it's more cartoony in style. It's right. Yeah, based. very it's, cartoony. Yeah. I, that's what I like about it. It's very cartoony. The characters are very recognizable. Like yeah. the raccoon's awesome. And then it has like a you press the B button, you can block stuff, and you can even hit them with that mm-hmm. block. Is there. it a flag that they're holding? Because on I have it for the Game Boy Advance, and, and you can hit a different button to like block stuff. Yeah, but they're yeah. holding like a little white flag. I think something. it's a. I no, think it's, it's like a, a I think it's a. Isn't it a fan? I thought it was like a fan. Hers that, is a fan. His is a, or the raccoons is a stick. Oh, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it's a stick. Yeah. Oh, guys, if you guys aren't thrilled yet, <laughs> just oh, I'm wait till we you discuss gonna, about yeah. raccoons and flags <laughs> and fans. Oh my gosh, this is hilarious. I'm excited for this. I know people. People who don't like play video games that might be listening or something they're gonna be yeah, like what like, are these what? guys playing yeah. a raccoon and raccoon it's and a little girl. asian girl and a raccoon you can pick whichever yeah. one you want i don't know it, i just love that this game exists and it's two player <laughs> yeah it's two player game too so that's oh, really sweet. cool yeah very cool so, yep. yeah yeah awesome. two player co-op. co-op all right so our video game dad pick is pocky and rocky and bullwinkle no just bought pocky and <laughs> just rocky pocky and rocky, rocky, and rocky, rocky for the super rocky. nintendo all righty Let's move on to our uh, big new goings ons or recent going on, uh, which was uh, our first video game convention, which was uh, Super BitCon down in Oklahoma City. Yeah. yeah. And what a what a fun, interesting time it was. Gee, oh, <laughs> boy. Oh, boy. Yes. Where do we start on this bad boy? Well, I don't know. I, I guess I'll, I'll give it from my perspective okay. uh, at first. So I, I, was on vaca- first. I was on vacation the week before, and I have a, I have a little lake cabin uh, not far from Oklahoma City. And so I was down there with my wife, and then these guys showed up, you know, later in the week uh, on Friday night, and then the convention was Saturday and Sunday. So they got there at like after midnight Friday. Yeah, you know, we got there in. almost one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With all the kids and everything else, you guys were already pretty <laughs> toasted. Yeah, uh, you know, by that point, and so then we we wake up in the morning and we get up early because we're about an hour or so away from BitCon, so we drive into BitCon, and then like the main highway coming into it's like closed down, <laughs> oh, <laughs> which it didn't geez. really click to me. I was just yeah. like, oh, it's that's like, sort of weird. Like, it's like Ooh. shut down. It's like, oh, that's really weird. It must, it must be a, a wreck ra- or yeah. something up there, you know. And there 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 had been it had been raining and there were some thunderstorms that had gone through the night before, so um, we we finally find a way th- off the side roads over to where to the state fairgrounds where the building is where Bitcoin was being held and there are trees just downed everywhere. And I mean at the base of the tree. Yeah. yeah. And pa- power lines. Power lines. Power lines. Not yeah. th- those yeah. huge ones, those huge ones that are like two, three foot in diameter steel were yeah. all like tilted. Sideways. Yeah. Sideways. Yeah. Oh my yeah. Gosh. yeah. Down lines everywhere. Trees hanging in power yeah. lines. So there's some sort of tornado that hit yeah. the Snap- day before Super Yeah, Bitcoin. snapped over poles. Oh. And and this went all the way up right to where BitCon was held. I mean, the trees outside the, the little convention center yeah. there were all snapped uh, too. So, and and you can look on Twitter. I took some pictures and uh, put it on there. I said like, hey, if you want to come to Super BitCon, follow the down trees and power lines <laughs> and Helen Hunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was amazing. And even even on the, on the convention uh, center, they had – you know, like overhead doors, you know, like two car garage or three car garage doors, uh-huh. those big metal doors. Yeah. And some of those were just completely blown in. I don't know if oh, you guys saw man. any of I those, see, but, yeah. but yeah, they were completely crumpled up wow. and blown in on one side of the building. Yep. Um, so yeah, it, it, there's some weather happened. So, yeah. um, so we show up Saturday morning and there's no power. 
Yep. And it's just dark. And so <laughs> we, all, we dark. all had to use our fo- So we go into this convention. So if you've never been to a video game convention, it's just kind of what you expect. It's a huge open area space, size of a football field that was um, had all our vendors set up. But you couldn't see a dang thing. Yeah, because... Everybody had their phone on their it was actually I was actually surprised that they let us go in. Uh, I was Honestly, because I thought too. they were... They, you know, but of course, everybody still got setting up to do and yeah, all these yeah. things. So we had all of our stuff at our little table, and, and we're sitting around with the flashlights and, and uh, you know, kind of got our things in there. And I had been up the evening before and actually seen it with the lights turned on and kind of done a little pre-shopping. But... Um, <laughs> yeah. Son of a... <laughs> yeah. But anywho, we... You know, so we kind of got our things set up. We kind of waited around for a while. And eventually around noon... Um, they basically called it and said, you know, it's just not going to happen today. Because, yeah. And I and looking at all the wreckage on the way in, I was like, I don't know, this is going to happen at all. Yeah, yeah. We, um, we we were all thinking that the whole weekend was going to be toast. And, you know, this that was, I mean, let's be honest, like now it's all over and we can get done. But like it, it was uh, it was like, what, six, seven hour drive. We had all our kids. I was away from my kid yeah. and everything. I was thinking like, God, if we don't do this, this is super disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but you know, the, the happy story at the end, the next day, yeah, yeah. the next day we, you know, it's, well, actually they, they planned, uh, they had an after party that was planned for Saturday at one of the, one of like local arcade kind of places. And, uh, uh, at that party, we didn't go to it cause we had to get back to the kids. But uh, yeah. one of my friends went and he texted me like, Hey, it's going to be open tomorrow. It looks like so. Um, so we drove back up the next morning and got set up real quick and we had a, we had a party all day Sunday for the most part Yeah, and, yeah. uh, met a lot of people and, and handed uh, out a bunch of cards and yeah, handed you know. out a bunch of business cards, pins. We had sold some shirts, sold a few uh, shirts. you know, yeah. got some listeners that we otherwise didn't have and had a, had a really good time. Yep. Um, you know, did, did a little bit of shopping, a little bit of, a little bit of selling of a, of a few extra things. And, and I think generally had a, had a, a good day the yeah. second day. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. I mean, we we um, kind of put everything together. You know, we didn't. We uh, luckily, Adam, you were great and bought a like stand, and then Shane got a banner, so it all looked pretty professional. Yeah, and our, you know, we had the t shirts out and everything. I mean, I feel like, and you know, uh, credit to the organizers, they kind of knew, and everybody everybody was kind of like super disappointed. But what can you do? Yeah. It's nature. Yeah, it wasn't their fault. Man. It was just a random. Dumb thing, thing yeah. that I mean, Oklahoma gets a lot of bad weather. Uh, but, Stupid tornadoes. Yeah, but like Jeez. you know, it just and I feel bad. You know, we weren't really there to sell and make a ton of money, but I feel bad for all the people that were expecting. Yeah, some people oh, really yeah. bank on on that, yeah, on you that. Know, for, yeah, for their living, but and especially Saturday is a big sale day too. Yeah, I yeah. mean, so but Sunday well. was was pretty busy and a lot of people showed up and yeah. and we got some wins, you know. On uh, so. Uh, we mentioned this before, but Mark Summers, the host of uh, Nickelodeon's <laughs> Double Dare. Yes. And uh, got to meet him, and yeah. we both got a signed copy yeah, and, of and Double Dare. And Phil Moore from Nick Arcade. Yeah. yeah. So, so they signed our NES Double Dare copies, and super nice guys. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they we took pictures with them, and they were really, really friendly. And, and uh, I didn't mention this. I should show you guys the picture. My, my niece, who was there, uh-huh. actually got a picture of... Mark Summers holding her up in the air, you know, <laughs> like like Lion King style. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Yeah, oh so. yeah, you're. Uh, and we met your brother. That yeah, was great. we met your brother. It's super cool. Yeah, the yeah. his baby there with him, and they had the Mario Kart. Uh, yeah, Lakitu Laki, or Lakito, uh-huh. whatever his that name was is. So yeah, cool, they, they made man, and cute. The, so the 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 stroller that my niece was in, uh, her mother put clouds around the base of it and uh, hung a little fake uh, video camera, camera off the front of it. That's yeah. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was, I, in, in my opinion, the best, uh, the best uh, cosplay, cosplay, Cos- yeah, however yeah. you want to pronounce that. Absolutely. Uh, at the, at the thing. But, but yeah, that was, that was really great. And uh, you know, of course we did some scouting out and, and we all picked up a few things while we were there as, as well. Um, but, uh, but I, I think it was a success overall. It's yeah. a very tiring weekend. Yeah. yeah. Not and a lot of tiring. Sleep, Thank but... you to the wives for watching <laughs> yeah. the kids. They, they were troopers cause they had all the, the power kids, go out. They had the power go out yeah, on them. Power went out. Yeah, yeah. Power go out on them. And man, the kids were all huddled up and inside because it was all raining and everything on Sunday too. I mean, it just didn't quit raining Yeah, the whole time we were there. Just, didn't quit raining so thank you wives for do, for watching the kids yep i really wish the kids could have came down they were all in their t-shirts and gonna come down and see us yeah. all that was so, i was so it jacked was just, about that but then yeah you know, them being an hour away yep. we didn't know it was you know we didn't know that it wasn't gonna go on at first yeah um so we did at least meet you know it was nice to meet some of the vendors and a lot of these vendors go 
uh, to all these other conventions, a lot of them, right? Yeah. And it was like, oh, we, we told them it was our first convention, so they all stopped by. Everybody was really nice. It was neat to see a lot of the games we saw. There was only a whole entire NES collection. Somebody was just kind of offloading. Um, yeah, so the, the night games. before, the Friday night before, and I, I may have texted you guys this picture. I'm not sure. But I... You know, I was going around meeting people, and this guy, they're mm-hmm. like, he's selling a complete NES collection over there. So I was like, what? oh, really? You know, so I, <laughs> so I run over there, and there's a box, and this box is about two feet in diameter in all dimensions. And open this box up, and it's uh, Little Samson Panic Restaurant, wow. uh, yeah. uh, Zombie Nation, uh, Noah's Ark 3D, um, and several other games. Every game in this box was a two hundred dollar and up game. Yeah, and that's there's like nice. a, there's like fifty of them in there. <laughs> you yeah, know? I mean every single one of these are like crown jewel of a collection kind of games. Yeah, yeah. and I was like, holy moly, you know. And yeah. uh, I mean they were all priced appropriately, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, but yeah. So I was like, there's there's some serious stuff in here. And then and then walking around the next day, uh, we kind of took turns at the table walking around and so forth and. There were some heavy hitters in that place, but it, it's amazing how expensive some of these, these yeah. games are. Yeah, so that, that's another thing we say, and that's something new for Adam that I kind of knew going in. And if you go on YouTube, there's some great like FAQ. I know, um, what's his name? John Hancock does a um, kind of like, hey, it's your first convention, what to expect. Yeah. He even says, like, wear deodorant and all this other <laughs> stuff. Is, uh, luckily, this wasn't hot, and it was kind of airy, so you yeah. didn't have to deal with that very much. But, you know, just like giving you tips and tricks and saying, like, you know, don't expect... Uh, amazing deals, everything half off. It's more just like uh, the convenience of having a whole lot of games yeah. in one place. And you're usually getting about 10, or yeah. 20%. There, was, you know? there yeah. was one guy there who was kind of a collector slash vendor, but he, he had things from his personal collection and th- these things were pristine. Yeah. And he did cut me really good deals on everything. I yeah, yeah. and it me. just depends on and, who you went yeah. to and stuff. And, and I, there, are deals, there are deals to be had, which nice <clears> is like what you're hunting for. Like you can find a boot. I found this guy in the back had all this Game Boy stuff and like he had, we could talk about like our pickups at the end we could just kind of organically say what we grabbed because we all kind of left the booth and like looked around and picked some stuff up but i got um uh f1 race for the original game boy in the long box that had the multi-tap yeah and i was just thinking it was just the box because he had a ten dollar thing on there but it was the box the game the multi-tap all in there yeah and i had this as a kid and i was like you were stretching that out between the seats of the school bus you know the, <laughs> yeah. the octopus you know with everybody sitting there in their little game boys in the yeah. back of the school bus yeah so you yeah. know there's something like that right there which i instantly thought well, holy cow that is good or like dracula x i saw which was a good price like uh, you know that price more than i do shane What's yeah that supposed dracula to be? x sort of dropped here recently i think it's down to 150 135 yeah. and, range and this guy had it for like 90 yeah, oh, I yeah. It, uh, yeah, around a year ago, I remember seeing it for like 200 Yeah, it used to be 200 around. 225 And it was just sitting yeah. in there in the front of the glass. So there are deals to be had, but it, it can get so overwhelming because yeah, there's then, so much to look yeah. at. And then some things, even though they're rare and it was the only one. So the Pan-Asian games, the, 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 the kind of... Uh, I don't want to use the word pornographic, but the the uh, the very suggestive adult. NES games. Sure. Adult NES games. There was one booth that had... All I can think there's three of them. All three of them boxed. Yeah, Whoa. and they were like two grand a piece. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those and things, and yeah. I was like, oh wow, you know. And then my my quest on the at the convention was to pick up a little Samson because I knew that there would be some of them there. And I did see probably nine or ten different copies of it, but yeah. every copy was twelve fifty and up. Oof. And I'm talking one thousand two hundred and fifty. Oh, boy, up. boy. So um, I... so yeah. So I did not leave with little Samson. Yeah, <laughs> but that's yeah. okay because it's not that rare, and I know I'm going to see it. Again in the future you will yeah so there was <laughs> I some, guarantee uh it. yeah um what what else uh there was a guy that uh is an author which uh oh, yeah named, this is really yeah cool. you picked up a book right yeah uh, i go to game conventions and buy books <laughs> yeah because <laughs> i'm just that kind of guy <laughs> yeah. we're so cool <laughs> yeah but that was neat to meet this guy brett uh vice or weiss yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's weiss I, yeah but, brett at least weiss. that's how spelled but super nice guy very yeah. knowledgeable especially about uh older systems nes and, and even yeah. older things we should have him on he even said he's like yeah. hey i'm a dad if you ever want to guess something like that i think we might uh we should reach out to him and hopefully he's listening um but he had some great books and he's been yeah. doing this a while like yeah he's before it was popular a bunch of books and appreciate. i've heard of him and, and the books are all well written and and have great pictures in them and, and a lot of good history yeah. um, and that sort of thing and i and i talked with him a fair amount um, you know, he's a, he loves the Coleco vision, you know, nice, which is a system I'm trying to get myself into a little bit. I don't have a lot of personal history with it, but I have two of them uh-huh. with the Atari 2600 adapter. Uh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> and, yep. uh, so, so yeah, I need to, 
those systems are a little bit older than me even. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but I really need to go back and spend, spend a lot of time with them because everybody loves the Coleco and, and I, I really do like what I've played of it. I was, uh, I was an Atari kid, you know, back before yeah. the NES kid and didn't really have much. I, I, I remember seeing Coleco visions, but didn't really get to play him so much. So he has a lot of knowledge that is completely missing. So you can just, yeah, thumb through um, that and figure out. And anything. I think, yeah. you know, as far as books and all that sort of thing, you don't think, well, books about video games, you know, that seems kind of goofy, but you know, this is how a lot of this history is going to be preserved Yeah, yeah. is not necessarily the games in and of themselves. So I, I actually, I mean, whether it be on Kickstarter or these authors, um, I try as much as I can to buy these physical books for these people that put all this effort yeah. Yeah. into doing this because after after I'm dead and after we're all dead and and people look back at, at what happened yeah. and that sort of thing, it's going to be this written word that yeah. survives. It's yeah. not. It, I mean, the ROMs and those kind of yeah. things are going to are going to survive potentially, but the narrative around the games, how they came into existence, what was put into them, you know, what was what was the thought about them at the time, what was the context that they were that they arose in, those kinds of things. It's people like this guy who are going to preserve all of that. And yeah. That's very, and that's very important. Yeah. And we need that too, because uh, I, I was listening to another podcast, this is the Giant Bomb podcast, but they always have a lot of inside of these old developers, these guys who have been reviewing games forever, and just a lot of insider stories that there's now a, a movement out there trying to collect all this, because these guys who are who are having these stories and... and, and um, creating these games are old now to the point where they're kind of forgetting things yeah. and there's no kind of record of these awesome stories. Yeah. So yeah, uh, you picked up what the hundred greatest console video games of all time. I should have picked that. I totally meant to pick it up, but at least you did. I totally forgot. So I'll have to next time I see him or I can grab it off. I'm sure he has a website or something. Yeah. But anyway, Brett, Brett uh, Weiss or Weiss is Weiss. Sorry, I'm used to. Uh, sorry, I was born in a German land, so all the W's <laughs> I say is Weiss? V's. Weiss? Yeah, so all the W's are pronounced as V's. So I messed that up. But anyway, <laughs> if if he is a German descent, it is supposed to be Weiss. But anyway, it's Weiss. W E I S S. Check out his books. You could probably find him everywhere. I think he even had him on Amazon and things like that. But yeah, uh, I flipped through the one you got, Adam, and it was pretty cool. So it's just neat. Even there was another guy, an author there, had nothing. To to do with video games i kind of checked him out and there's people who sell you know the other thing at video game conventions or besides all that cosplay stuff there's people who sell like plushy type stuff do the pixel art yeah you picked up a those couple of yeah, those some pixel art and those yeah, people yeah. Are super those are nice. cool. i bought a, i bought a video game quilt yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. saw that. <laughs> I bought a book and a quilt. <laughs> Jeez. You're yeah. 80, right? Well, no. So How old are you? <laughs> before you guys came down, my wife, Casey, went there with yeah, me. Yeah, justify this, Adam. And so, so we, we walked around, you know, and kind of chatted with a lot of people and stuff. And my wife really liked these quilts. They had Mario quilts, they had Zelda quilts, they had yeah. a bunch of different different quilts and uh so my wife because she didn't get to go the next day i thought well i get to get all these games i'm going to do something nice, nice. and yeah, i'll buy her cool. one of these quilts so how would she think of it so uh oh she really liked it okay. um and and it you know i bought it from these from these women and these are handmade you know and, sure. and the women at this this booth and they were you know thrilled to be selling it to me and, and they had another little stack of quilts back there and she said, "Well, you get to pick the next quilt that we hang up in the in the spot of the one that you bought because <laughs> you bought that. one." That's cool. And I said, "Oh, okay." And so the the choices were Star Wars, uh-huh. uh, Harry Potter, and uh, and Doctor Who. And I oh. said, "Too Ameri- I'm too American and I'm too old <laughs> for two of those. Yep. So it's going to have to be Star Wars." Yeah. <laughs> good pick. Very good pick. So so yeah, we got that. So yeah, book and a book and a quilt. Yeah, and we did. Hey, we kept to our word. We gave out a T-shirt. What was really nice was yep. right when we set up uh, to our left. And I am sorry, I don't know her name, and then I also don't know what she, she was uh, local to Oklahoma. And uh, sometimes they also like festivals or upcoming events and things. Uh, so it wasn't necessarily selling video games. But she came up and said, I love you guys. I listen to you guys. And it was great because it was a woman. Yeah. No, that was <laughs> uh, and really she listened awesome. to it on her own. She was like, yeah, I just love what you guys are doing. I'm such a big fan of yours. So uh, we ended up giving her, uh, she won the t-shirts and she was the first one that said, hey, you listen to you guys. Yeah, yeah. super nice. And she, yeah, super she, nice. I got yeah. a big hug after the convention. Sorry, we don't know. Nice. Yeah, if you want to email us your yeah. name or whatever. But yeah, uh, we appreciate it. Cool. Yeah, and you were awesome obviously uh, overjoyed at us giving you a free t-shirt yep. and she wore it so proudly even though she was uh, not hawking something else or do you know her booth was about something else she instantly put on that t-shirt yeah. so that was pretty cool yes thank yeah. you very yeah, much very nice. <laughs> yeah us us you know amateur hour here doing this podcast in the basement yeah uh, we like we you know it makes us feel good knowing that people uh uh, listen to us, found out about us and uh, especially not our typical demographic because we yeah. hope that we can kind of 
um, have all types of listeners, all age ranges, all uh, demographics and stuff. So that was really cool. Yeah, um, for sure. Sure. Yeah, but a really good fun time. Uh, any pickups you guys kind of want to talk about? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can go. I got yeah. some too, uh, so. as well. Okay. So I, I Adam, go. you go first. Sure, I'll go yeah. first. I guess. Um, so I, I ran around and I got a, a few NES games. Like I'm, I'm kind of heavy after NES right now. So yeah, I've kind of been trying to Damn figure it. out how many licensed games I have left to get because I'm, I'm not that far from a from a, an officially licensed set. Oh, yeah. Boy. So this isn't all the unofficial <laughs> games and, and that sort of thing, but I'm, I'm probably somewhere around 50 to 70 games away from oh, it. Oh boy. Yeah. That's um, close. so I'm, I'm not, ter- there are a few heavy hitters, little Samson probably being the heaviest that I, that I still don't have. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's, that one's kind of pricey, but yeah, uh, it is pricey. <laughs> but I, I did pick up two pricey, um, r- uh, rare games at the, at the thing I got, um, uh, uh, Flintstones Escape from Dinosaur Peak, uh-huh. which is a, it was a blockbuster rental. Yep, and there are not very many of those around, nope. and arguably the most rare NES blockbuster game. and Hollywood video. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, even I, Holly- so. I, I thought it was only right. Hollywood video, but yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. I was uh, for some reason I must have read blockbuster, but it was a rental regardless. So yep. so not not many of those out there. And I bought it because it was cheaper than Little Samson, and I <laughs> and I know that I'm less likely to find that again in front of me uh, in the future. Yeah, yeah I'd um, say I haven't seen that as much. So as I Samson. bought it, and I bought a game called Panic Restaurant, mm-hmm. which is also a rare, you know, kind of expensive game. And these and are both a, probably what top ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So some this, heavy hitters. So this is a <gasps> this is a Taito game. Well, and the guy already had them priced pretty well, and I didn't really anticipate buying two of them. But on these higher end games, people are really inflexible on the price of these. Yeah. Um, and rightfully so, uh, in, in general, but, but, um, he already had, you know, things priced pretty well, but it was kind of one of those, well, I can't really get a good deal if I just buy one of them, one. but I can get a pretty decent deal if I buy both. Yeah. So, um, so I sort of bundled those together and saved myself a chunk of cash. Well, saved, I guess it's, yeah, uh, know, saved. It's this is really. a very, this is a very air fingers quote, save money. Yeah. Um, but don't, I, don't look up the prices of these. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. Yeah. It'll scare the pants off of you. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I did pick those, uh, up my, my NES count and I got a few other, you know, NES games. I, I didn't own any of the, uh, officially licensed Pac-Man games. I got all of those at the convention. Yep. Um, nice. Uh, and, and then a few other, a few other games. Um, Dusty Diamonds. Yeah. I got Dusty Diamond. Oh. Been, so it was my birthday, actually. Actually, on Saturday too, which was also the day the the uh, tornado hit or the evening before. Yeah, the we tornado, didn't even know. So hit, like, hit. yeah. So so yeah, my my birthday was uh, in a in a dark convention center with these guys. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting on the convention, but Benjamin was really nice and, and picked up Dusty Diamonds uh, softball for me, which was the game that I really wanted to get at that convention, which was nice because I hadn't found it yet, and he found a copy and got yeah. it. Yeah, that's also gone up in price, but like I guess yeah. it was still good because then I saw it in another retail store yeah. uh, recently, and it's even. Like it was, I, I would like to think that that increase of price is because we had it featured on this podcast. Oh, yeah, we Absolutely. caused that, so of course <laughs> I do that. Yeah. And what's funny is you both own a physical <laughs> copy, and I, I gave mine to Shane. It's like one of my favorite, yeah. Games so now two of us have it, and, yeah. And yep. the one that really likes it doesn't. Well, it was yeah, a happy that's... birthday present, at least I could do because yeah. uh, you know, you put us up in your nice little cabin, yeah. So, so we got that and, and really thrilled to have it. I um bought Gunbird 2 for the Dreamcast, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, which is kind of a pretty hard to find uh game, it's a, it's a shooter. Yep. Um, and got a good price on it. And then um, not at the convention, but actually at a local retail shop, I got Einhander Ooh. for... Yeah, talk about this game real quick because I wasn't too familiar with it. So it is a Squaresoft game, and it came out near the time of Final Fantasy VII. Nice. As far as I know, it's the only real Squaresoft Sh- shooter. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. a, it's a shooter. It's a horizontal scrolling shooter. It's polygonal. Um, super weird, obscure. I love yeah, it. It's yeah. A, yeah, it's, it's obscure. It's, it's very... it, but it's supposed to be really good. And I've been on the lookout for a while for it. And, uh-huh. and, uh, I'm not, I have a lot of PlayStation games. I don't actively collect for, PS yeah. one, even though I have a lot of them. Yeah. So it seems kind of dumb, but, but, uh, but I, I pick them up when I see a good price on them and that sort of thing. But I've really been wanting to play this. So I, I found it and I and I got it and then I of course bought a few Wii U games uh, to continue the quest for the complete <laughs> <laughs> Wii U North American uh, release and so I got all of the Just Dance games. Oh, awesome! For dirt cheap. Ooh. Oh man! Hey, you know this is, you can't make fun. You know this is what you kind of got to do. I, yeah. So this is this you're is, already in it. So this is a, like... this is the shameful part of collecting. So I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there was a there was a woman in Oklahoma City uh, a couple of days before the convention who had like literally all of the Just Dance games. 
4 Wii U, which I still, for some reason, I haven't bought them yet. You know, yeah, and uh, they, she had it for one. like five dollars a piece because <laughs> so you was, can already dance so well, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, you don't need that. I know, so these I, three Caucasian males in this room <laughs> can dance about as well as someone who has <laughs> epilepsy. I don't know, like, we, we probably it's, should, it's play. sort of like we Johnny, probably should play these games, yeah, to be it's, honest it's sort of like Johnny Depp and Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but not as good, yeah, but just, yeah, <laughs> but even worse, yeah, but yeah. less good looking. Um, anywho, uh, so I got up all the all of the just dance games for Wii U, so so there's that. Yeah, and then a friend uh, hooked me up with uh, the Resident e- or not Resident Evil, um, the Walking Dead Survival Instinct for Wii U, which is actually kind of a hard game to come by and generally kind of I've a pricey that. game. Yeah, surprisingly, I've heard that. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I got that, and I wish I had how many I, games I have left. It's only like seven, I think, at this point, five, cool. six, seven games. So I'm I'm really Dang. close. But I and I also added um, Rodea Collector Edition for the Wii U, which is, um, and that one's sealed actually. But that's probably the rarest Wii U variant of a game. Is that so, the one? Is it a double disc or something? Yeah, is it's it a big com- box set. I've got oh, okay. it in that cabinet over there. But but. Uh, and it came with a. It comes with a nice little necklace for. for Got to wear that. Yeah, <laughs> that, I'll, that I'm sure I'll wear everywhere. Just dance games and a necklace, <laughs> necklace. Yeah. and a quilt, mm. and uh, you you you're off the podcast. I'm just kidding. No, no just it's kidding. it's cool, you're man. <laughs> no. But uh, but yeah, so so that were that was my pickups. But I'm 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 getting real close. I'm gonna have that Wii U set co- completed probably in another month or two, Sweet. and then uh, and then maybe the NES in the next year. Nice, we'll see. Nice. What What did you get, Ben? You want me to go? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Are you done, Adam? You, yeah. Or, yeah. Did that's you get all, Did you get me. some more? I can't remember. I, I got that Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. Oh. I, I guess. Yeah. So there was a there was a really minty copy of Cadillacs Ooh. and Dinosaurs yeah. for the uh, Sega CD that I picked up. The chain's all hot and bothered about. Yeah. Um, so. We're trying to work out a trade right now, and I'm sure it'll probably end up in his hands. Uh, here. Yeah, that was a great pickup. <laughs> I wish we could do video right now. Yeah, I it's, make a, it's a super cool game. <laughs> at Cadillacs and dinosaurs. You should you should YouTube it if you if you're unfamiliar with it. But if you like Streets of Rage too, you will like Cadillacs and dinosaurs. Yep. I could do. You want me to do my mine's short and sweet? Yeah, do it, dude. Okay, so I just did a trade with uh, one of Adam's buddies. I guess my I'll call him a buddy too. Um, I ended up doing a trade. Uh, I can't remember what I gave him. But I know what I got. I got Ranger <laughs> X. Yeah. So it sounds like it worked out well for you. Yeah, I mean, I can't remember what I gave up. I can't remember what I gave up. So uh, I was super yeah. happy about what I got. So I got Ranger X in box uh, for Sega Genesis. Looks sort of cool, but I heard it's sort of. Eh, some people like it, some people don't. Yep. And then uh, I think it's Lightning Force 2 uh, on Sega Genesis. So I'm really happy to have that. It's loose, but. Uh, I like if it's a good game and it's loose, I'll collect that all day. So, and then I bought a five dollar cola from the concession stand, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got. Man, yeah. all right. Well, you sold some stuff. So yeah, sold good. a few things. So I was happy. So I had to look up on my phone to see it because luckily I snapped a picture of all this random stuff. You're okay. So those don't know. I collect kind of weird random stuff. I like the obscure stuff. I like the kind of off the beaten path stuff. And I also like that when you buy this stuff, like even the people like, Hey, you're interested in this thing. God, I almost didn't put this in the car to put on the thing. (laughs) So something I got that I was super, uh, if you haven't heard tiger made this thing called the R zone, the R zone. -Zone. And it is terrible. It was back. (laughs) So tiger, God, you know, it's, it's neat to see tiger tried the game com. Anyway, the R zone is this head, thing that you strap on <laughs> and it it has a laser that, that goes on amazing. your light and it, the commercial for this thing if you youtube like our zone it's the best commercial it ever is, it yeah. looks like it's the most amazing game and it's like it's it is future, amazing and you it just don't get it this light so it, <laughs> so all these like lcd type games uh it basically took that technology and put it into something that beams on your eye they're terrible they are the crappiest little games <laughs> but they made a handheld version of the r zone which to me is like super interesting and it was there at a booth and it projects it on a screen but it kind of looks like a small little game gear Mm. and it came with a game and uh you know i only saw i've never seen this before in person yeah i've never seen it either perfect shape like it looked brand new most of the time these things are beat up or they don't work or the little foil projection screen if you look at it look uh it's it's called uh the R Zone uh, XPG, and I, I can't tell you what the heck that means because that's both a X-rated film and then <laughs> parental guidance. I don't know what that's about, but it came with Batman and Robin, and yes, it is 
wonderfully terrible, but it's I love to have it. There's only one other copy of it on eBay, and I saw it was like 70 bucks, and Whoa. I got it for 20 which is kind of a weird thing, but I love the obscureness of it. I also got Sonic CD for the Sega CD. Ooh, good that's game. That's a good game. Uh, that's a good game. I got a Super Boy, which uh, that's like a handheld version of a Super Nintendo. I okay. didn't get it there, but I got that also. Um, this this Game Boy Color Changing Glass, which is really neat, like in the cold at Super Mario Land, which is one of my favorite Super Marios, like shows up. Uh, that's only made like overseas, and the fact that it was there, I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, this little <laughs> Nintendo Journal that has a Nintendo controller on it, really um, a handheld version of Tetris, Duke Nukem Forever for the PS3, the box set. I got that for about $21. I was yeah, happy that's, that's all yeah, brand that's new. that's a good deal. That's cool. Yeah, some kind of obscure stuff. Jurassic Park for the Genesis. There complete in go. box. <laughs> JP, Copy baby. number. Uh, I already own this, but it was... In, it was <laughs> so it was the same seller. It was the same seller that Adam got his um, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. Yeah, super nice guy. Yeah, super nice guy. Yeah. And also great prices. He's going to be at the Missouri Game Con, which is going to be our... Our next convention here's a quick plug uh august uh i think it's 11 12 12 or 13th yeah. uh missouri yeah. game con in st louis uh you know there's going to be some uh youtube personalities there we'll talk more about it we're a little ways away from it but um we will definitely be there that'll yeah, be our next con be and it's close to home it's only three hours away as opposed to six so we're excited about that um I also got a game for the Sega Pico. Yeah. Oh, do you have a Pico? Are you learning some numbers? I don't have a Pico. I got a Pico, man. Oh man, yeah, they're so cool. So yeah. uh, the Pico is basically like, uh, oh, what's that new thing now? Leapfrog, right? Yeah, it's so sort of like VTech. Yeah. It was before yeah. the VTech Leapfrog, but it was made by Sega, and it's technically a console. It's a kitty console. It actually has a it's Genesis Genesis guts. Yeah, yeah, it's Genesis guts inside really? of that thing. Yeah, yeah. no, okay. man, yeah, same like processor. The, the and Sonic everything. game for that is I've actually really it's. I'm not gonna say it's really good, but it's it's playable and it's okay. I mean, it's, it's the pinnacle of gaming. Just go ahead and say <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, it is. Ski ball <laughs> with Sonic is amazing. Oh man. So uh, yeah, it's spelled P I C O. The reason I got this is because I'm trying to get one like software version of every Everything. like console made, and I don't have many left. Um, and I get the cheapest game. This was like five dollars, but it was complete in box. It's super obscure, and that's like right up my alley. Um, also game exchange was there. So I picked up a lot of cheap, like Saturn games. They had a lot of sports Saturn games, Ooh, complete in price. You got me a game. Yeah. You got me a game. I did. Yes. With Dan Marino on the front. Yes. Yeah, uh, cause qu- quarter, is that quarterback club? Quarterback I can- club, 98, 98 or 97. Yes. No, 96. Sorry. Quarterback yeah. club, I think 96 or 97. Listeners didn't know, but with me and uh, Ben are huge Dan Marino fans. Groupies. Randomly yep. in the middle of <laughs> Kansas. Yeah, and yeah. we don't have, in the middle of Kansas. So that's how we instantly were friends. We don't know why, but <laughs> yeah. we like that guy. Yep. That was our quarterback growing up. You know, yep. we're just little kids like uh, certain, some people like Joe Montana. We like the yeah. better quarterback, also known as <laughs> Dan, Dan Marino. Marino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Ace Ventura that did it for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lease is out, Dan. Lease yeah. is out, Lease Dan. Lease is out, Dan. <laughs> and then, hey, Dan's the one that discovered that she's a man. man. She's a man. <laughs> hey, everybody, <laughs> starts, stupid, everybody starts spinning. <laughs> man, what a stupid movie, but it's also awesome. Great. But I picked up a lot of cheap uh, Sega Saturn games. Also at that place, I kind of found something they were maybe slipping on. Can we say that? That's always when they misprice it. I got... Uh, scary dreams for the game boy advance for eight bucks and those don't know uh unless you collect for the game boy advance there was a game that came out for um north american audiences and it was called tiny tunes uh it wasn't called scary dreams it was oh buster's bad dream uh but here it was called scary dreams and last minute they pulled it because uh they were afraid that you can't sell a game that says scary Scary. dreams to kids so it was super rare hard to find cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars and then um, ended up, um, uh, they found a pallet of them, and then they got dispersed. So now the game isn't worth a ton, but still, sometimes you can find it for like 70, 80 bucks. So the really? fact they got it for $8. That's nuts. Yeah, it's one of the rarest Game Boy Advance games. And that's why I love collecting for that system, because you don't even know. And it was behind yeah. the glass. It was probably I know there you're, forever. You're always hitting me up with like, man, this is like an $80 game. It's a $50 game. I'm like... No freaking clue that yeah. would have been, man. Yeah, it's nice we got GBA's all... GBA's got some, yeah, some stuff. Yeah, so I there. feel like I know a lot about like the Dreamcast and the GBA. But yeah, that was... and just as an aside, like GBA, I'm not a big GBA collector like you, but um, God, if you really like Super Nintendo, you should Which really you, like yeah, GBA. You like, should, it's yeah. got yeah. such a good library, and the games are so similar. 
and it's, they're pretty good price. It's for the like most Super part. Nintendo, but it's like good Super Nintendo. Yeah, yeah and know? it's actually, I mean, there, there's a great video out there on YouTube that kind of compares the GBA versus Super Nintendo, and it's actually kind of like a souped up Super, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, even though yeah. some people don't. Uh, the aspect ratio, you're playing on a small screen, but you can always get a GameCube player mm-hmm. to play. So, like, honestly, you can get. Uh, so my uh, GBA collection is way bigger than my Super Nintendo collection, but a lot of great, like you said, Super Nintendo yeah. games are also on the GBA, like all the Mario games are, the Contras, Doom. It even does some first-person shooters pretty and well. Look, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I went hard on that, so I have probably close to 200 games that are just like, Good games. Yeah, really yeah. good games. They're not even filler games, yeah, just good games. I, yeah, <laughs> uh, so um, the other thing that I got that m- lets you play this on the big screen, which also would save your pocketbook, uh, might steer you away from the Super Nintendo. Like I said, just bang for your buck. You could probably get 200 GBA games for the price of 30 um, Super Nintendo games. Uh, there is a new adapter that is a... Um, Retron, um, I, I think it's Retrobit makes this, and it is a um, GBA to SNES adapter. So it looks like an SNES cartridge, kind of like the Super Game Boy. But you put your Game Boy Advance in there, and is you it can slip on the top. Yeah, it's okay. Well, it, it slips in just like a cartridge. Oh, so it you, actually slips in. Oh, okay, yeah. it doesn't just hang there. That's good then. Okay. Yeah, so it plugs into your Super Nintendo, and you could play your Game Boy Advance games through your Super Nintendo. So then you could play GBA on the big screen. So it's oh, like if, you have a Retron, if you have a Retron 5, you can also do it. Yes, you yeah. can also do it on a Retron yeah, 5. Yeah, we were going to use that at the uh, convention, but we didn't get a chance to. Yeah, so yeah. picking up a couple of handhelds. And the Superboy is just like same thing where you can play the Super Nintendo on it. Oh, that's weird. I just realized I got something that you can play a Super <laughs> Nintendo on a handheld. Then I also bought something where you could play a handheld on a Super Nintendo. I need to jump off a bridge. What yeah, the heck are we doing, is, guys? Hmm. We are freaking crazy. Why do our, lives, our wives love us? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we buy stupid stuff. Stuff. Yeah, we have Wii U kiosks. <laughs> There's a chance all three of us might have a Wii U kiosk soon. <laughs> we have the PSVR. All uh, three of us. Yeah. Oh man. Oh boy. <laughs> we barely deserve to walk this earth. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're crazy collectors. We say right from the get go. Yep. Um, but anyway, so that was most of my pickups. I can't think of what else I got, but really kind of obscure, different stuff, which is yeah. exactly what I went for. Um, but and that that's was... the perfect place to get stuff if you're into that. That conventions yeah. are yeah, the best. If you want place. weird, man. There's plenty of that at those conventions. Yeah, actually, yeah. Find, you, you know, it. convention regrets. The one thing I regret not getting is I know that before everything opened up, I saw a stack of CDI games somewhere. Oh, what? In there, and I could <laughs> not. I couldn't find them. I yeah, the whole thing got opened back up. I don't know if somebody got them. Or I just couldn't remember where they were at or whatever. Oh, but I really man. would have loved to save those CDI games. Yeah, that would have been cool, um, man. Because I've, I don't know, I've got like maybe 10 CDI games or whatever. But Do I you have a CDI? Yeah. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Oh, but, cool. Uh, I, I actually had one as a kid. My dad like yeah. traded work to get one. Like Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I've got, a, I've got a CDI and I've got... I've got like Dragon's Lair and Space Ace, and I've got like the Encyclopedia, which is a good one. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've got a, Hey, I've got Encyclopedia too for the CDI. Yeah, I, th- I think it's a Britannica or something. Yeah, I, I can't yeah, remember which is. one that's on it. Yeah, but that's I, something you can multiplayer, but you need a pocket protector. <laughs> you need to still have your Virginia. But yeah. So I, I, you know, but there was a little stack of CD, CDI games, and I, I think I think Mario uh, Hotel was in there, which I really would have liked to have had. Um, and of course the. Uh, the Zelda games that Nintendo disavows, uh, yeah. the Wand of, uh, Wand of Gamelon, and uh, I'm trying to remember what the other one's called. If you ever want to see something just horrible, YouTube CDI Zelda. Zelda, yeah. It's oh, just and, and watch those, watch those cutscenes. They are good. <laughs> <laughs> it FM. looks like Lexi Jerome or something. Oh, it's, that, it's crazy. horrible, man. Yeah, it looks like it's like it's like colored in etch a sketch. Just, yeah, they. I, it's like you know four dollar, you know bargain bin game. Yeah. yeah, when when Nintendo so Nintendo said no to Sony, <laughs> and then went with Philips and made that. Yeah. Oh man, they dropped the ball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was a lot of our um, stories from our. I think our first convention is successful as it can. We sold no, a couple we, shirts. I think we made the best we could could of it. Yeah, you guys sold some good. games. It was interesting. Uh, like you know, when you come up, a lot of people are just interested in games, and you know, we're a podcast. We weren't trying to throw it in people's faces. We had cards available, but it was funny. Like a lot of people like don't really like they're just coming to look at the games they don't want to like uh 
um, maybe talk to <laughs> talk to us. Yeah. I guess so. It's like we'll go up there, like, hey, shake our hands and all this stuff. Yeah. A lot of people are like, what are you doing? doing I'm backing up from yeah. our table, walking away. <laughs> It wasn't often or whatever, but yeah, it's just funny. Yeah, while, yeah, it's just like it's we're three guys. We're not salesmen. We're not anything like that. We were literally. I feel like all our games were priced really well. Yeah, we were just trying to Heck, meet. I was practically giving mine away. <laughs> you were. We tried. Oh, this yeah. poor little boy. I know he's not listening, but this is poor little. <laughs> this guy came up and he was I don't know a teenager and he was just so shy and he was looking at like your Halo game and you sold it to that sold him. A yeah, hit. I sold him one really cheap. And then he was looking at another game and I and I was. I was kind of worried that, like, oh, you know, maybe the pro- maybe he's just worried I'm going to want too much money for it, but I think yeah. he was too shy to ask me how much money. And I was going to give him the game. I was going to give it to him, but he, like, wouldn't. Walked away. Yeah, you scared, scared him by talking to him. It was I, yeah. so funny. It I, makes... said, I came over to him and said, hey, you know, why, you know. And what I was are you gonna, interested in? What kind you know, of games what, what are you interested in? can I help you with? And, and you overloaded him by yeah, asking him He was him just that. like, yeah, and I did. Pew! And, yeah, he, I scared him away, and I was trying to give him a free game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just basically like backed up. The more questions he gave, he kind of smiled awkwardly. And yeah, went he back did. Up. He was like, "Oh, interaction." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, sorry, but but yeah. So there was that. I you know I tried to hook a few people up, and you know we 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 sold some stuff, took some stuff home. Yeah, <laughs> took a lot of stuff. Home. Either, either way. <laughs> yeah, I got to meet people. That was neat. Uh, yeah. his game chasers were there too. Yeah, that was kind of neat. Who else was that? There was some other. There was. Uh, yeah, Big Eric was there. Yeah. Alpha Mega Sin was there. I mean, there's. there's Who was the guy YouTubers. from St. Louis? Uh, I really like his uh, kiosk videos. He's got a bunch of trading oh, games. I, I, ga- I can't remember his I name. I can't remember that fellow's name, but yeah, yeah, he has. I talked to him for a good thirty minutes about kiosk, and he is just a really nice yeah, guy. Yeah, he'll be yeah. he'll be there because obviously GameCon's in St. Louis. St. Louis, yeah, there. he'll be there. I think his name's Josh. Josh. Think, Josh. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, but yeah, if you look at like Ultimate Game Store, he's got the most kiosks in the world. Yeah. Uh, really good collection. collection. Yeah, yeah. Really good game store there in St. Louis too. Um, yeah. And our kids survived. Uh, my kid didn't come, but all our kids were there in one little cabin. Yeah. Uh, but Adam's cabin is pretty sweet. Um, yeah. And it was cool. Yeah. Man. But it was rainy and muddy. So that made it, it wouldn't difficult. have been raining, man. It would have been so awesome. Yeah. yeah. It was it raining been, yeah. and it got nice like the day after, you know, yeah, that's I know. the thing. It's, it sort of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we brought like the switch. I got to play that a little bit finally. Yeah. In we your got car. to play just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, I will pick one of those up eventually. I just got to wait yeah. till some more games yeah. come out for that sucker. Uh, something else that kind of came up that I thought we should um, uh, mention. Uh, well, I, we're pretty much that was our convention, right? We should yeah, uh, that finish was, that talk. Yeah. I was great. We appreciate anybody coming out that said hi to us. Yes, we got some new, you, you know, new followers, new listeners. We totally appreciate that. We totally cut our teeth on that convention. Yeah, but it sounds like. Uh, the convention cut other people's teeth and yeah. some trees over too. So anyway. All right. So that was most of our talk this time. We didn't pick another di- uh, like discussion about um, uh, the topic we were going to probably talk about, which were kind of um, some, uh, underappreciated consoles. We went just with our convention. I was going to tell you guys, I did something before this podcast earlier today. Uh, you guys have heard of Super Mario Brothers Two Lost Levels. Yeah, I just freaking beat it today. Oh, really? So I was pretty Whoa. proud. Yeah, nice. like I was the hard Mario. Yeah, a few brothers. from many episodes ago. I talked about a neighbor guy that uh, has a kid too, and he has a little basement that has Super Nintendo. Not mm-hmm. like crazy, like average kind of guy yeah. with with the Super Nintendo. Not like us who have all yeah. these games and systems, but. He had uh, Lost Levels uh, for the, yeah, it's the Super Nintendo version of it. And he said, he's like, man, I can't beat the last level. I'm all the way at the end. I was like, shoot, man, we got 20 minutes. Let's see what we could do. And I totally felt like that guy when your team <laughs> makes a Super Bowl run and they need a backup center and they pick up this guy who's fishing and he comes in, he gets to win the championship. It was so great because he did all the work. He got through freaking level one, two, world three, four, five. You know, it's like, uh, Mario Brothers goes like you stole a save file and yeah. just took over. So he got all the way to eight three, and it's hard, man. That, <laughs> Lost levels is super hard. Yeah. Um, but I was able to. We beat it like right before at the very end. There's like a little trick to it where not only is it really difficult with certain specific, really precise platforming. If you don't do a certain thing, like 
it'll loop its level, kind of like the ghost mm-hmm. level. You know how the yeah, ghost yeah. level? Yeah, you have to go through everything in a sequence. In a, right yes, sequence, in the yeah. right sequence. So uh, I was I able to do that, that and freaking beat lost, lost levels. I've wow. never even played half of that game because I fell off of it earlier. But yeah, I totally <laughs> was like, yeah. Right. <laughs> I did all the work. I know, because most of the time when Cheater. we play that, we end a level, like whatever level we're on, we don't do that. So that was really fun. <laughs> Something else I was going to mention, uh, we don't talk a lot of like new stuff because we just don't get to it, but... Um, limited run, uh, we've mentioned before on this podcast, is, uh, and everybody is talking about it under the sun, under this little community, is releasing Night Trap. Yes. For the PlayStation 4. So the old uh, Sega CD 32X. Hide your kids, hide your wife. <laughs> yeah. Hide them. <laughs> Man, Night Trap. Night oh. Trap. Night Trap is coming out, like, basically kind of remastered for the PlayStation 4. I don't know how they're going to remaster it. Yeah. yeah. I'm so I mean, curious about the, this. Because the old video is just so bad. Yeah. You know? Well, I, they showed some uh, screenshots from it, and the aspect ratio is going to be bigger. It, yeah. This is going to be the definitive version of this game, <laughs> and they're only going to make six thousand. I, I thought of them. I, I never would hear those words. The definitive I version know, of Night, Night Trap. Trap. I thought yeah. Night Trap was just dead and gone. And it was a thing. I know, but it, it, as a kid, though, I loved. I mean, I thought it was pretty cool. But the only it, reason it was, anybody liked Night Trap is because it was the game that got all the Congress people yep. to try to ban video. Games. Yep. <laughs> yeah, everybody knew that too. Yeah. That's why it's so yeah. cool. It's because it's because it's because uh, Senator. Lieberman didn't want you to play it. Lieberman, yeah, yeah the ERCB, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, one of our friends, Norm, has a really good video. If you look up like the ESRB um, on YouTube, uh, like the whole, a really good kind of like 15, 20 minute video about how this got started. And it was, it was people seeing that game yeah. and like full motion videos of like, you know, your um, girls are getting, a, it's a sorority. I don't even know. I don't even know what I was only, so bad. I've only seen little snippets of the of the game on like, you know, Norm's, uh, he's the gaming historian, so you just YouTube that on his video. I've never actually played it, but it looks so benign compared to, you know, a lot it's of things that are out there. It's just a time, yeah, it's just well, a time Well, it's the fact, so the basics of the game is that you're sort of a security guy, from what I understand, controlling these cameras, and then there's these people trying to break into a house to kidnap these these. Women, yeah, these women, women. Co-eds. That, or yeah. co-eds, co-eds or girls yeah. or whatever yeah. that are in the place, yeah, and that's the basis of the game. There's no nudity in it. There's no, no blood. There's no no. It's just Which is, the, it's yeah. just that concept was so controversial wow. to be in a video game back then that it caused this huge uproar. Um, but um, <laughs> and then Night Trap is like just kind of thought of as in this way and it's kind of been collectible because of this and a good talking point so everybody's lashing on this it's gonna be a hard one to get yeah Uh, and it's got well the crazy thing is so it came on out out on the 32x the sega cd well there's there's two different versions so there's the sega cd version which is the more common version and then of the sega cd version there are two different covers there's a blue one and that's the one that that's the um the reprint version after all of the rating yep. stuff was put on it. And then there's a red version, which is really, which cool. is cardboard. Yeah. And that's the more rare version. That's the one that came out before the rating system. Yep. Um, and, and then the third version is the Sega CD 32 X version that's where you is. have to have a Sega Genesis, a Sega CD and a Sega 32 X to play it. <laughs> but, it, but it, it has, it, it, absolutely it, nothing. so the video goes from like 200, <laughs> yeah, 200 P to like, 300p and it adds some color <laughs> yeah and, and actually i i there's a lot of p in there yeah so <laughs> yeah anywho that, that's that's the the best version that exists is the sega cd 32x version yeah. which i'm sure is the one that they're probably remastering for for this little deal yeah but uh but there were all these <laughs> fmv videos that came out and they're all made by this digital digital uh image or i think it's the name of the of the company but they made this supreme warrior uh, Fahrenheit. There's all of these yeah, horrible just, FMV games for Sega CD. Yeah, and they're all worth playing because they are just. <laughs> What's they, the plumbers don't wear ties? That's that's a 3DO game. 3DO. Yeah, that's yeah. 3DO. That's another one that's yeah. super. Obscure. Yeah, I don't. I don't have that, but yeah, super obscure. Is it plumbers it's, don't wear ties or own ties or what? Wear ties. Don't wear ties. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's a very. My brother game. thought that that was going to be like the future of gaming. Like oh, he, the FMV stuff. Yeah, he yeah. really thought that. Yeah, was. if you ever want to see just just what were they thinking, you yeah. know, horrible video game stuff. Yep. Play those old FMV games. They are so awful yep. bad that they're good. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I had uh, for the place original PlayStation a game called Fox Hunt. Uh huh. Have mm-hmm. you heard of that? Yeah. 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 Uh huh. They made that for something else. I remember I got it in Funko Land. Do you you got it for PlayStation? You said I had it for PlayStation. Okay. And now it's like super rare. Yeah. And, and it was complete. I ended mm-hmm. up when I got rid of all my PlayStation stuff, uh, sold it all back to like you know that was uh, I don't I don't know when, but I ended up. Um, uh, selling it back, I wish I didn't because it's actually like really good. It's over like four different discs, so the whole thing is like super. Um, it's actually good though. I like. I mean, it is good for an FMV game, and I really liked it. And you control this like guy, and he basically turns into Indiana Jones and a spy. Um, but I really, really ended up liking it. Um, but yeah, that that was the only one of the only FMB games I had. But now it's isn't it like a hundred dollar game? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's expensive. It's, yeah. yeah, I see. It on I had a chance one time and there. I missed out on it, and I yeah. was like, no. I kind of wish I would have it again. But the cool thing is, you can see the whole game on YouTube. YouTube yep. And you any of these games, you can see the whole game on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, and it's all about hitting the right arrow. It's just like uh, Dragon's Lair, where you're hitting the right arrow yeah. at the right time. That's the way they all are, right? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. there's no. Like corpse killers, like that way too. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, also, same company. Oh, is it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, they just turned out all these bad horrible. games. horrible. My buddy yeah. beat that. Yeah. I watched him beat it, and it was just a nightmare to watch that thing. Ugh. Yeah. <clears throat> so we didn't have much time to do any game playing, uh, sure. but you played a little bit, Adam, with your. Yeah, kiddo, I was just going to mention. Um, I've been playing some things with with my kid on on Switch here uh, over the last couple of weeks. So Mario Kart uh, Eight Deluxe came yeah. out for the Switch, yeah. which is a great game. Um, it's it's really good. It's every bit as good as the Wii version, plus, and then some. Yeah, all the but DLC. The yeah. thing that makes it really great for playing with kids is that um, it has a. By default, even it, it's set up to ha- it has an autopilot on it, essentially, yeah. oh. where you still have control of your character, but it won't let you run off the track. I have heard of that backwards, and oh, it keeps man. you go. It keeps you going forward at a, at a slow velocity, even if you're not pushing the accelerator. So um, every night before bed, I put on a Grand Prix race, and we do all <laughs> yeah. four races together, and he plays. And he gets to finish the races, and in his That's mind, cool, he's man. doing great. Uh, and I yep. get to actually do, you know, to real actually race to Mario Hill. Kart. Yeah, so we're we're playing Mario Kart together. I know. I can't and, wait to play Lexi. And, like, and yeah, and he's and off. he's starting to you know figure it out. But it's like it's a great training wheels kind of game for a little kid. And you know, I turn and it lets you turn all the autopilot stuff on your your controller and keep it on his. And the cool thing is, like on the on the little characters on screen, yeah, when, yep. when your autopilot's on, there's a little, there's a little antenna uh-huh. on the back That's of so your cute. car. Yeah. yeah. And so it lets you know that like that, that player's is kind of in control. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but the, but the really computer cool. sort of taking over, but that, that game's actually super awesome just I'm for that. I'm so glad they added that. Yeah. It's anyway. a cool way to play with your kids. If you got yeah. a little uh, kid and you kind of want to introduce them, bond, play with them, but you're still not like, obviously like, yeah, you're not, not progressing t- you're or not, something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Great. And, and yeah, so I just, it's like a know, handicap in uh, golf or whatever. Basically. Yeah. yeah. So I, and uh, you know, and it, and it's not a full on cheat. Like he still finishes 12th on every race. You know, you sure, can't just yeah. put on the autopilot and you're, you're still going to finish last if yeah. the autopilot's doing all the work. But uh, but still, and you know, it, it lets you get through the race and lets you lets you participate. Very cool. And uh, and then Yoshi's Woolly World, uh, we've we've been playing a level or two of that just about every day. Yeah. And, uh, and that's a great game because again, it lets you play two players at a time. And you know how Yoshi and y- Yoshi's Island or whatever he makes little legs and the legs follow him around. Yeah. Well, you can actually grab the other player and make him into an egg and yep. make the egg follow you. So if we get to a bunch of platforms that I know he's not going to be able to jump over, <laughs> yeah. I yep. just eggify him and yeah. then he just you. follows me yep. through it. And then I, and then I pop him out of his egg and he's, <laughs> and he's playing again. Yeah. You would totally do that. I mean, if yeah. you were doing some triathlon, you wouldn't let the kid run like next to you and like push him. Like, it's like, no, you're getting on my back because <laughs> I'm not back, finishing son. last. Kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, but it's this. really good. And, and Yoshi's Woolly World is a, it's a really good game. Yeah. Just, just even aside from that, the artwork and everything in it, it's, it's super cutesy and blah, blah, blah. I get it. But have you been going for all the costume or the skin? Changes? Not really. I mean, when you're playing it, with a three year old, yeah. I kind of yeah. basically You're just trying just, to get through the stage. Yeah, I just yeah. get to the end of the level, and yeah. then and then we go yay, and then it's yeah, <laughs> and then it's the next level. I but, gotta uh, know what what's Grace who's he pick for Mario Kart? Like does oh he, for who? Yeah. So right, he he's he he really likes Luigi. Okay, for, for one reason or another. Oh boy, I thought I liked Grayson. Yeah, he <laughs> he, he really what? likes Luigi. Uh, for some reason, he's really glommed on to him as a character. Okay, more so than Mario. Yeah, um, and then uh, he likes. Uh, 
he likes some of the Koopa kids. There's one, I, I want to say it's Iggy, but I don't think that's right. But it's the one that has the, the multicolored mohawk. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know Lenny? So he, is that Lenny? I think maybe it is Lenny. Lenny. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are hilarious. You yeah, guys so know he, the names of this stuff. I will tell you yeah. this. I don't know much about what you're talking about as far mm-hmm. as the kids' names. There's some controversy on the Koopa kids actually being the spawn of uh, King Koopa. What's his name? Uh, Bowser. 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 Yeah, yeah they originally said, like Miyamoto in an interview, originally they thought of him as kids, but now they're just kind of like his, his yeah, his, uh, well, his like henchmen. Oh, okay. And they're not really his children. They're okay. just like extra people that aren't part of the lore, uh, but they're like just kind of his henchmen, not his kids anymore. Even huh. though early on, I swear they kind of, yeah, kind they of, yeah, that, that was always, that, that that was always the, yeah. uh, because yeah. who's Miss Bowser? And also, is it a dinosaur? Is it a lizard? Uh, what is Bowser? Uh, he's a, he's an anthropomorphic. Uh, <laughs> he even dragon said too he is thing. he's part dinosaur, part yeah. like lizard or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I just. Thought that was interesting. Those mm. Koopa kids. I can't keep them straight. I, it's Dry Bones all the way, right? Oh, Dry Bones is awesome. Yeah, I yeah. like Dry Bones. I actually play as Koopa, just the regular Koopa Turtle guy. Oh, that's my that's my favorite character. That's right. yours. Okay, I but I think I've been mixing bones. it up. I refuse to race as Rosalina. No, with <laughs> no Rosalina. with with a motorcycle though. I won't do it. No motorcycles. No scooters. Those don't belong in Mario Kart. That's my stance. Man. Yeah, I'm, that... I'm so much better with the motorcycle, but I'm the same way. Yeah. It's like I could not drive a motorcycle. No, the, but those. I still, uh, yeah, it's I'm not the best with It's that, not though. true enough. I'm too old for that crap. I gotta have. I gotta have a real cart. Yeah, and you it's called have, a cart game. I'm using a cart. You guys have played that one. Like for me, I still I go. I'm the more old school. I really like uh, the Mario Kart 64. Okay. So I haven't played these newer ones, but I started to play. I I get it, but there's like also all these power ups, and you're doing coins. It's a little more yeah. involved. And then yeah. you're turning in the corners with the power boost. Well, that's everything. 64. I could do that for sure. I can, it is, I can uh, but wipe all, the floor with either of you on yeah, 64. Yeah, all of the four versions. This are really new one, good. I can't. Yeah, yeah, but the 3DS, Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS, and then the DS version of Mario Kart are both really, really good. Okay, cool. on the other um, versions, because I played pretty much all the versions. On this, the newest one doesn't do this, but on the Super Nintendo version, this is what I, I hate. None of the new versions do is so when you finish the race, they don't, the computer just, it just automatically comes up as mm-hmm. what they finished. I like on the Super Nintendo version, it would like, it would make you watch them finish the race. So it would like, yeah, you know, Yoshi would end up eighth or something. Mm-hmm. You'd have to wait to watch that. They don't do that anymore. It sort of drives me nuts. That's because we don't have attention spans. <sighs> Man, I loved it. I always like seeing like because yeah. it would, it let you watch it and you see somebody get hit by a red shell. Like, yes, he got knocked down on the point scale. Now yeah. I'm kicked up to one. The one thing like, I haven't done they they boofed the they boofed up they beefed up all of the uh, all the battle modes and everything in this oh, one versus so the much others. Better. And I haven't yes. I haven't really delved into that because I've been playing co op with with the kiddo um, yeah. so much, but. One of these nights, Shane and I are both going to have to get our switches together, and then I'm going to have to. Uh, yeah, we got to do friends like a, code. <laughs> like a uh, friends code. Yeah, we're going to. Oh have to, my gosh! Well, I don't know if we have to friends code each other or not, but but yeah, Shane's going to get a whipping uh, when when <laughs> no. we play some Mario Kart. Hey, I'll get good at it too. I just I so, know I can't wait till you get yours, man. Then we can play. Yeah. It's gonna be it's awesome. Yeah, we'll for sure do it. Do you play anything else? I know you've been working. You're working on kind of get. You got a house and you kind yeah, of yeah. We're the flipping. flipping. Yeah, we're flipping a house. So the past month has been just draining. I've been yeah. The me and the wife have just been high and by. Either one of us is working and watching yeah, the kids. That's and super just, busy because you're the stay at home dad, three kids trying yeah. to flip a house. Yeah. This, so it's just been hectic at our house. Yeah. Our house is just a mess right now and. But yeah, they, we're getting through it, you know. Yeah, they're busy, man. Kids are busy. My uh, two month old or whatever, like he's he's so great. I cannot complain. He sleeps through the night, but it's still uh, a lot of work. Are, oh yeah, dude, it's a yeah, lot of work. But he's sure, he's now pulled um, um, eleven hours twice now straight. Whoa, he's super hungry in the morning. But boy, he sleeps through the night still. I'm so happy with this kid. Uh, one of my people at work said it's a trick baby, which yeah. initially I'm thinking like, ah, <laughs> no, I grew up in the 90s. That means something else. But uh, <laughs> they just mean it tricks you into having another kid. Yep. Oh, and yeah. so, you know, Laura and I are just, we're not sure what we want to do, but it's like, this, there's there's no way kid number two is going to yeah, be this no good. Yeah, no way. No way, man. And then we're still waiting for him to fall off and regress and and be like an emo kid or something <laughs> and just start like having issues. You'll never but, understand my feelings, But Dad. he's so freaking sweet and he's so good. And even like our pediatrician like loves the heck out of him. And he's uh, he's got a big old head like his dad so much that, <laughs> that the pediatrician even wanted to like maybe um, ultrasound his head. It's just like, well, he's, he's kind of off the charts on his head. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. He's my son. You know what they say, big head, right? Big brains. Um, um, hopefully, yeah. I mean, I feel, like anything, I always feel like he's super smart. He's already like 
responding back to me and stuff. That's really fun. Yeah. He's le- you can see he's learning fine, you know, motor movement. He's like reaching his hand out. He yeah. knows what he wants to do. It's really cool to follow the developmental yeah. like stuff like that. So yeah, that's really fun. So I heard that you had a good experience at a, at a local store here yeah, lately. Yeah, there's this shop that's like an hour and away. I have never even heard about it. And I actually, like, if you search the area for video games, I've just never heard of this store. It's in a college town in Warrensburg, hour, hour and a half away. It's called Rockin' Sports Entertainment. Yep. It doesn't even sound like it has video games. Yep. And it ha- might have, like, the biggest collection of video games that you know no one's ever heard of. Talk about a hidden gem. Uh, this place is great. Like, floor-to-ceiling... Everything under the sun. Tons uh, of games. Yeah, I met the owner. Just I went in casually one day and ended up spending like an hour and a half in the store. His name is Nolan. So mm-hmm. shout out to him and his store. Um, I ended up buying a lot of good kind of cool stuff from him. Some obscure like PS3 stuff. Um, uh, some Game Gear stuff that I used to have as a kid. And then I also picked up one of those TVs. It was like kind of HD folding TVs that um, they used to have. It like uh, They're pretty big in the Army, made by games, G-A-E-M-S. Oh, it's yeah, basically yeah. Like, the, the fold open thing. That yeah, you it's basically a hard yeah, yeah. case. And I instantly knew, and I kind of told him, and he appreciated that I liked weird stuff. But I heard him chatting up with like other people about, you know, he also has like sports cards and other things. But uh, as far as like video games and video games, he has a ton of merchandise. Yeah. I was trying to talk him into actually being at the Missouri Game Con, which I think he'll at least attend. So it'd be cool to run into him when <laughs> sure. he goes because we're going to have a little booth there. Um, but just really great stuff. And, um, you know, I ended up buying a few things from him and he ended up kind of cutting a deal based on kind of the, the bulk I bought. So just, you know, uh, really enthusiastic owner about video games, really gracious, knows his stuff has a great kind of story about how he started and you know he started at the right time in the early 2000s or whatever maybe late 90s i can't quite remember um but you've been to a store too yeah right? i have yeah i um i bought swamp thing and, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and street gangs uh for the nes nice uh, from him and yeah when i went into the store i was like holy moly i've never seen this much nes good nes tonnage yeah you know in in a single it's store. almost got a thrift uh, uh thrift store feel to it yeah, because yeah. he has everything on this it's one of he those has everything two. like he he literally of the things i don't have for nes he has most of what i don't have yeah which needs to be mine yeah but even like game gear like most of the time you go in a shop maybe they have five six games or whatever and you know he had a lot of commons and uh he even says like a lot of the rare stuff he'll put online because you know not many people go through this little town to find them but i was asking for stuff that most people don't you know he ended (laughs) up having probably like i don't know 150 200 game gear games and he had That's a, com- a lot of game. He had a com- games. yeah. He had a complete. Yeah. He had a complete inbox uh, Dreamcast for maybe like sixty five, seventy bucks. Really? I feel like that's wow. a good deal. Like I don't. That, I don't. Uh, yeah, it seems like a good. I deal. stopped collecting yeah. for Dreamcast because I have the whole set. But like I just you know just kind of you know good stuff. And like I said, I think I got a good deal for that hard case. Uh, and that's going to be kind of up for my office or if my wife is playing. Um, uh, or watching TV, I, sure. I can end up you like... You your separate screen. Yeah, separate screen yeah. without putting on the VR to not be able to listen to it. But anyway, um, it's just kind of nice to find an, a new game store. So if you're in the area or ever like going through, that place is as good as any of the ones I see on kind of YouTube or anything like that. So Nolan's called Rockin' Sports Entertainment. Totally check it out. Yeah, Warrensburg, Missouri. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was great. Um, he even ended up uh, told him about the podcast, so he's going to listen to it and everything. So... Anyway, it's great to find an independent store owner that totally like cares about his customers. But anyway, that's that. But that's kind of been it on on that. We doing that. Um, convention weekend kind of yeah this yeah so but still a lot of fun pickups that kind of thing uh we might have to run this one short we really try to do two hours for our podcasts yeah because we're bi-weekly this last time we sorry we were because the convention we we did uh three weeks but we most of the time try to be bi-weekly because a lot of the weekly podcasts are an hour long so that way you get to um listen to us over the course of a longer time because we do want to plug out our our content for you guys um so our video game book club picks are 
Uh, Pocky and Rocky. Pocky and Rocky for the Super Nintendo and Altered Space for the Game original Boy. Game yeah. Boy. The OG. So, yeah, so play those guys. Yep. Um, uh, and also to email us your video game build club picks. Anything? Oh, we had some corrections. We had a, um, a few episodes ago I talked about the XFL and I said the New Jersey Devils. Sorry. That's obviously that's a, hockey a hockey team. team. Yeah, that's hockey. So the correction comes in by myself because I'm super embarrassed. It was <laughs> uh, the San Francisco Demons is the what I was Demons. thinking of. Okay. So there's only eight teams. I don't feel too bad, but I'm like, you know, of course, the video guys correct don't know. Yeah, I your know. Career, your career in podcasting is now over. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> done. <laughs> done. Yeah. Uh, but to email us in, Adam, what is our email? Video game dads at yahoo.com. And our Facebook chain is uh, facebook.com slash video game dads. And Twitter, Twitter us at, uh, at video game dads. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Uh, we will come back with another episode here in the next two weeks. Unlucky number 13 is coming up. <laughs> uh, we totally appreciate it. Sorry if we were a little uh, 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 tired this podcast. We, uh, <laughs> a lot of stuff yeah, going we, on. Yeah, we've had a lot of stuff, but we wanted to churn one out for you. For you. So um, thank you for listening. Appreciate thank our you. listeners. Episode 12 is now in the books. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. If you enjoyed that music, please check out Evan King on Bandcamp for further details, and you can download some for yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye.